Hello, besties. Welcome back to another episode of I Am Besties. As always, I'm your host, Vanessa Casares. And I'm Stephanie Ramirez. And today, our lovely guest is Chief Davey. Woo-hoo. Hello, 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 hello. How are you tonight? Doing good. Yeah. Feeling it. The cold is getting to me, but. Yeah, you came very, not going to lie, a little slutty. I have to, you know. (laughs) I got to freeze for fashion sometimes. Love that. Oh, it never gets cold. Do you feel like you're one of those people where it's like, it's cold, but you're just like, fuck it. Like, I'm not not like a big sweater guy. I would say, yeah. You're not. Fit comes first? Fit comes first. Oh, of course. Fit comes first, and then like... I'm in my bed and it's cold in the morning. You're not seeing me out my bed. Dude, I hate <laughs> you know that. I mean? like, Honestly, there's nothing worse than getting out of bed in cold weather. When you're like, the yeah. just, worst. oh my God, I can't do it. I hate the cold Dude, weather. The showers. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. And I've also, I feel like I've realized that I'm, I'm, I don't hate nine to five. Like the idea of like working. I actually realize I hate getting out of bed. That's the part that gets to me. Like, I don't mind working. Like, mm. I, I feel like I can work. But getting out of bed is what really just... I think that's ruins, everything. It ruins my whole mood. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I have to get out of bed. Like you wake up like are you happy and then you realize you have to actually yeah. get out. Yeah. I feel like that's the hardest Dude. part because like, have, I don't know if you guys ever had those times where you caught like you're laying in bed because you're so warm and comfortable and then you're like, oh my God, like I want to call off because you just Easily. don't want to get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you call off and then you get out of bed and it's like, fuck, I just want to go to work. Like, yeah, when you finally do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're like in a good mood. You're like, fuck, I should have just gone to work. You're you know? right. But you did have time to kind of like recap and be like, okay, I'm going to lay in bed for a little bit. Yeah. I think that's why morning people that wake up early are always in a good mood. Right. Because they right. have time to kind of like collect their thoughts. And people that wake mm-hmm. up late like me, I just wake up and I'm like, shit, I had to do this, this and this. I have to hurry up. I feel that. Oh, you know my what I mean? gosh. For the last like week, I've been waking up at like noon. I'm like, I need to change <laughs> noon? something. Yeah. yeah. You think been, noon is bad? I mean, okay. All right. <laughs> fun. I got some. I need to. Damn. <laughs> the cheese man. Only because the days last like freaking two hours. That's true. That's yeah. what sucks now That's about waking true. up late. Dude, the time change happened. The sun yeah. sets six hours early. I'm yeah, just, seriously. The and then you, it's like four o'clock and you're like, what do you mean? I've only been up for four hours and the right. sun's coming down. Right. Do you guys feel like they'll be like, oh, we just like made the time like one hour behind or one hour ahead? Like, but it feels like they changed like four hours. Like, All it doesn't it. feel like just one hour. Oh, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Nobody wakes down. I mean, we're the only people in the world that do it. <laughs> huh? We're the only people in the world that do it. Oh, really? Huh? Like, I think Mexico does it. Wait, what's the reason behind it? What do you guys, I don't Honestly, even know. What's I, the reason? I think that back in the day they wanted to extend the work week or shorten the work week okay and so like they're all working without uh like artificial light so they started doing that to save the daylight so everyone could work more so it is kind of a scam you know for the big business well yeah just because we don't need it anymore it is a scam yeah Yeah. but they they um a few years ago they put it on the polls like they were like oh do you want to vote this out oh and they did it people voted no yeah they were like let's keep doing it i don't think arizona does it oh yeah arizona has that yeah it's crazy i love arizona though they have really nice like Mm -hmm. long days yes oh my god even though the weather sucks ass but just exactly Exempt. <laughs> it's fully exempt. Yeah, so, facts. Mr. Um, Davy, Chief Davy, is a music artist. He is amazing. So, Thank I want to speak. When did you get into music? What's your inspiration? Mm-hmm. Uh, you I know? would say I started like I think it was about five years ago, four and a half, five years ago. Okay. I was I was pretty stoned, and I was sitting at my <laughs> friend's house, and mm-hmm. he had already started doing it, and it was okay. like everyone's like rough around the edges, like yeah. starting and whatnot. And it just inspired me. I looked at it. I'm like, this looks so dope. Like, yeah. Because growing up where I was, it was like either you get thrown a guitar or a surfboard and you're like, okay, uh, okay. fuck off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go find something then, to do. Yeah, go, go make this work. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I'd already been playing guitar and like piano and a little bit of the drums. And then when I started playing on a computer and like getting ideas and making mm-hmm. it like hardening them is just something that was super crazy for me. Did uh, you feel like the passion for it right away? Immediately. immediately. Wow. Because I, I grew up listening a lot, which is like one of my influences, a lot of 80s. So okay. like Billy Idol, like David Bowie and all that stuff. They got this super unique sound that I was trying to chase. So I'd catch mm-hmm. myself listening to the same song for 
two, three weeks at a time, just mm-hmm. nonstop, just because I like this one part. And I was like, why don't I just try this? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I do catch myself listening to all my own stuff, not to be jaded. But yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I make it for me. Yeah, you know I mean, you saying? make it because you feel like it's, you know, good good enough to right. put out. So obviously, why wouldn't you enjoy it? Super coping mechanism, too. That's like, cool. When you can, like, speak about it, and yeah. I kind of reflect with myself listening back to it. Was, I, don't know. I like to speak in cipher, so I'm like, if I analyze this from the outside, nice. You know what I mean? You kind of step That's out of your own shoes. Totally. Oh, totally. so cool, so cool. That's mm-hmm. a really cool, like, um, I guess, what do you call it? Improvement method. Yeah, I guess you know? so. Yeah, you know. That's and really cool. And how'd you come up with your name? Honestly, I was in my mom's bathroom recording my first song ever, and I was like, "What? What should I be?" And the first thing that came to my brain was Chief Davy. Mm. out of nowhere so it was just on the spur of things so yeah. it was like midsummer and yeah. just posted up I'm like what sounds <laughs> what, what sounds sick and then i started doing research like a week later i was like no one has this i love nice. this nice i'm gonna keep it do you think stuff. um picking an artist name is kind of like picking your email like when you're a, a little baby <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. i got multiple aliases like some friends call me peewee vapor for some reason what the heck and i think i was just way too drunk and invented it myself nice forgot, but, <laughs> at least they know. stick you know how people try to put their own nickname and nobody wants to call it i always wanted a nickname name but nobody yeah. ever gave you one i never had one either did what? people call you vana not really no what mm-hmm. i always want to call you that but i'm like what if her only her like family calls oh, her no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. love it I don't have a term of endearment. So. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Pressed. babe. I'm going to start calling you, you that. You can start calling me yes. that. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it comes very natural, but I stop myself. No, yeah, you're you know fine. What I mean? Go for it. Okay, yeah, cool, 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 cool. This just, is the process, yeah? yeah. There it is. <laughs> There's the process. Guys, you, yeah. <laughs> Artist name being born. Do me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dab, I'm not that quick with names. Let me sit on it. Let me sit on it. So is Davey your real name? No, my my real name's Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Yep, Daniel Kiesel. It's the government side. Oh, you know I mean? Kiesel? Mm-hmm. Kiesel. Oh, I've never heard of that. Which runs back to like when we're, we're, we're just talking. I'm Argentinian and Hawaiian too. But then I have a German last name, blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. So, you know, there's Have, have you ever looked science. into it? I have. Really? Um, so it's crazy. There's a lot of German in my family, I guess. But they're okay. it's like the, the colonists, the colonizers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they came to Hawaii, and that's how my dad's side happened. Oh. And then, of course, everyone knows what happened in Argentina with the Germans. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know what okay. I mean? So, oh, so it comes from both sides. Both sides. Damn. Well, my grandma is Argentinian and Sicilian. <laughs> Okay. Too, wow. You know, and then That's so random. Random. Just super, super mutt. I would yeah. like to say. You know, super mutt. Super mutt. And do you feel connected to like, like, um, does your family have very Argentinian, like, I guess, traditions or? So I grew up more like touching base with like the Hawaiian side oh, okay. a lot more. So like, like childhood breakfast for I think eight years of my life was spam and eggs. Nice. You know what I mean? Constantly. <laughs> Still fire. But yeah. Can't go wrong yeah, with that. Can't go wrong. <laughs> but uh, now I'm starting to, as of late, exploring my Argentinian side. Okay. I, I haven't okay. really talked to too many people on my side of the family who are Argentinian. You yeah. know what I mean? A lot of them are just the... Uh, the second cousins or the cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of get a skewed perception. Okay. So I'm digging into it. A lot of that just taps into music too. Like mm-hmm. I started really digging in when I uh, was working with Samaya Reese because she's Latin. She does Latin music. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is this is really interesting. I want to see how I can dig into this. And I think that's like my avenue into understanding yeah. okay. like what's going on. That's super you know cool. I mean? Before we continue, we're going to take a moment to shout out our sponsors at Manscaped. It's never too early to play holiday music and it's never too early to start thinking about gifts. Whether it's for a friend or for the friends in your pants, you can make this season to be jolly with Manscaped. Do your little drummer boy a favor and use the lawnmower 4.0 to avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Then add in Manscaped's top of the line shower products to have the people thinking, all I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> Santa cares about his sack and so should you. Look nice when you get naughty by going to manscaped.com and use besties for free shipping and 20% off. Honestly, um... Now that I've been giving all the Manscaped products to my husband, he has been f- super <gasps> feeling himself. And he, like, never wore cologne or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So when Manscaped sends him over, oh, my God, he's been smelling so bomb. And you can tell that, like, it's, like, just that nice little touch mm-hmm. towards the end where you, like, you know, a little sprinkle. And you're, like, okay, I know yeah. I look good. I know everything's groomed and good. Yeah. And it really shows that, like, confidence in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's taking care of yourself. Exactly. Well, he's taking care of himself. And it kind of... It makes- projects. It makes you feel a little more like, 
Ooh, like, ooh, like, who's that hot ass over there in the mm-hmm, restroom? Mm-hmm. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. It has everything needed to help you deck the halls from face to balls just in time for the mistletoe season. The Platinum Package has each product from the best-selling performance package plus ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo plus conditioner, and ultra premium deodorant. It's the best way to smell fresh from your Santa hat to your candy cane. The Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer feature propriety advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate presence. Plus, both are waterproof, so there's no issue clearing the snow out of your driveway. There's also a 4000 LED light on it so you can light the way like Rudolph. Now that you've groomed candy cane, it's time to make sure you don't smell like a reindeer with the Platinum Package shower products. All of Manscaped's shower gear is sulfate-free, vegan, and made to have your skin feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. But smelling good doesn't stop at the shower. The Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve stain problems all day long. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. The Platinum Package 4.0 Sitting Under the Tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. And for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in the brand new Body Buffer, an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating easy and a lot cleaner than that old loofah. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BESTIES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code BESTIES. Manscaped's Get Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. And we now return to your regular scheduled programming. Music. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is this is really interesting. I want to see how I can dig into this. And I think that's like my avenue into understanding yeah. okay. like what's going on. That's are, you, cool. are you ever planning on going to visit and see the I, place and see dude, if you can connect deeper? I really want to go to Buenos Aires. Okay. Mm. That's where my grandpa is from and my grandma. They're both okay. from Buenos Aires. So I was like, where's where are the roots coming from? Nice. You know I mean? So yeah. I think so. Argentina. I've been to Hawaii a bunch. Hawaii is fun. I just get like island fever. Mm. What yeah. is that? It's like you're – because it takes an hour to get across. So okay. I go to the island Kauai. It takes an hour to go across. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you're there for more than a week, like, you've seen it all. You know wow. what I mean? You've seen it all. So it's like, oh, I want to go home. Like, there's not really much to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much be- – and then it's, uh, it's kind of biased over here because I was born on the beach pretty much. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not missing too much, but – Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? But mm. Still equal pricing. That's super <laughs> cool. Are your – not to be direct, but are your grandparents still alive? So, so my grandfather is not on my mom's side, and my grandfather on my dad's side is not alive. But so like, both my grandmas. Oh, okay. So do you alive. ever ask your like grandmas like questions about their history? Sometimes like, about their life. Sometimes I try to, but yeah. they, you know, old heads be sometimes they're yeah. like veering into every other avenue. Right, except what you actually want to know. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want your your never-ending story you know, <laughs> like like the movie you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like sure. i want to know what's up and you know if a sicilian and argentina talking about their history is a little <laughs> tough history. yeah okay. it's a little tough i feel like i always regret not asking older people because i know sometimes it can be uncomfortable like to mm-hmm. ask them about their lives i i but i do regret later like not like man i really should have Ask this person you. about this story that, you know, they pretty much lived through, like, history or something. It's right. really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially the grandparents. Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You think of all the shit that just went down, like, as of late. Like, I started watching The Crown, mm-hmm. which is the, like, about Queen Elizabeth yeah, II. Yeah, yeah, And they all lived that shit. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, tell me, how did you feel? You know what I mean? Because they're all in Argentina during the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And so that was, like, when the Germans were flooding because right. you, you know, Germany went down and stuff. And I'm just like, tell me what, what went here. Cause they have all that military service. They have but do you do. think they felt like almost kind of how like we feel right now? Like we're just kind of like, Oh, it's happening, but Ooh. doesn't affect us too much. So I don't think about it too much. That's a good question. Especially because back that. then, you know, you didn't have the access to the information. So when you would get it, it was almost like a little late. Like it had already kind of, like that's true smoothed I didn't out think a about little bit that. that's interesting yeah i don't know why i've been like really i think it's because of the world cup i've been really into like where's everybody from like right. what's, what's going on here <laughs> i've never seen that one tiktok like hmm. like we get like, some drinks oh where in. are you from yeah He's like, matter of fact, fact where's everybody from <laughs> <laughs> literally me with the world cup i'm like wait what country is this and i just start looking up their history yeah. i'm living for it Damn, i feel like a um poser i have not been keeping up with the world cup i stopped now because mexico <laughs> lost Obviously, yeah. like I don't really know yeah. much after that, but yeah. because my brothers went to the World Cup, mm-hmm. so yeah. I've been they try to like 
They keep talking about it, obviously. Yeah. Now, yeah. a lot of my friends love soccer, so I've been for sure trying, and I'm like, um, not gonna lie, I really don't want Argentina to win. But... <laughs> I get you. I get you. I was like, oh, Argentina's going strong. Then Messi pulled his little stunt of he uh, kicked the Mexican jersey. Yeah, a lot of people but... were saying it was like he was taking his shoe off, and it looked wrong, but. I didn't watch it. I only watched it one time, so I didn't really analyze it. But gotcha. you guys decide. What do you guys think? I, did didn't, it look? Ang- I didn't understand Did it because what was a Mexican jersey doing in there? Honestly, right? Don't they trade jerseys thinking, like after games? And they shit? might. Honestly, I've I've been out of the loop kind of too. Oh, okay. okay, it could be that you know that like, makes sense. I'm not sure. That's a good. I, need to I just go feel like look into it. You you only see what they want to show you. That's sometimes. true too. But also too, yeah. like bro, like if I just like beat you, like if you're my opponent and I just beat you. Dude, you just demolished us. Like, give I'm us a not, break. Where's the beef? <laughs> no, 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 but like, I wouldn't like, dude. If I freaking kick the shirt, like, I'm not doing it to be malicious. It's more like, yeah, bitch, fucking win. Like, right. like, what the fuck? Like, right. why, why do people? Because right. like, little up, you're like, you know, oh, I'm gonna take this. Right. Yeah, bitch, like, I fucking mm-hmm. won. Like, hell yeah. Like, I'm not kicking it to be real. Like, bro, like, fuck these, you know, beaners and shit. Like, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I don't think you know. He just, bro, like, it's just he just. Right. What? Like, what the fuck? Let him, let him enjoy his win. But that's what right. I'm saying. Like, I'm right. feeling also like, okay, it's just Mexico. Like, why you gotta be like that? You know what I mean? Like, you're the best in the world. Why you gotta yeah. treat us like that? You know, give us Dude, a break. For real. Treat us, bitch. It's a jersey. Like, what do you like? But I- it's. Re- I think that's what that's what the argument though. That it's mm-hmm. it is the jersey, so it's representative because the whole world's watching. That's it. where I saw it blow up too. Like a lot of. What happened? What happened? So it's um. Uh... Everything was a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Or even like the Mexico players, they're like telling the media like you guys, you guys are dumb. Yeah. So when you give jerseys, they're all uh-huh. sweaty and nasty. So right. They come on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, word. Like, yeah, that's how the people around know that take them to go wash. So that and then trippy. The whole kicking the thing that wasn't a whole thing. See, the that? reason why Canelo got mad was because someone that's sent a fake Photoshop picture with the broom with thing, the broom, right? And yeah. It was obviously fake. Oh. Canelo already apologized and. It's, it's, all, it's all squash. But what I'm gotcha, saying is like it'll bro- gotcha. it'll blow up out of proportion okay. because the whole world is watching you that's, right now. Yeah, that's but what I saw was Canelo's like, piece. I just feel like the whole Thanks, world dude. is like quick to get mad. Like Oh, for sure. Like even if he did kick the jersey, bro, like I'd be like, okay, cool, you know. Move that's along. true. Move along. Like, you know, like, 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 bro, like, yeah. he acts like you freaking kicked the little kid. Like, it, you know, it's a freaking jersey, bro. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I just don't Dude, understand. it's because people yeah. are so passionate. Like, just like music. Like, how right. some people are so passionate yeah. about right. it. Like, people would die for soccer. But when is it, like, borderline for insane, real. though? You know, I feel like there's a right. thin line and people, are, like, are not even walking it anymore. They're just, like, straight up on the other fucking side at this point. But you know it's what? It's like national Literally. beef at this part. Yeah. I, like, I think, though, it's like I think men with sports are a lot more excused with being like neurotic about their their passion you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like I've seen people like punch the TVs and stuff like that I'm like this is not normal fandom behavior no so when that's that's kind of how I feel like when we were talking about the whole Kanye thing like I just think people get too invested they do in people that we don't even know win or lose too like Philadelphia burning their whole city after the Super Bowl exactly uh, Philadelphia after the Eagles won the Super Bowl they like burned like parts of the city like were just riots after winning after from the city that won yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't even they won and they yeah. that's what i'm saying like they're like oh it's because we're celebrating like bro that's not normal that's not okay. it's like a no, triple no. edge sword yeah exactly yeah, 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 yeah you know like, how do you feel about kanye about what what do you do again kanye's what do you do he's just right been now. saying some my algorithm um, does not bring up that man really Mm-mm. gotcha you're not missing a lot but yeah no, yeah he's definitely what do you say like, now Oh, pretty much that like he okay but yeah. supposedly that got taken out of context too but Wait, his also, latest stuff? yeah 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 the last oh. thing i heard was that he loves all that just oh, like he God. loves jews he loves nazis yeah i wish he just didn't use that example like so like he pretty much just said like he likes hitler and for that reason that he likes everybody for yeah. like one of their their good things you know that he I mean? doesn't judge but like he's, either side in this culture right now, especially with everything that's already built up to that, yeah. it's kind of just like messy. Like sometimes I think that's what I mean. Like it matters what you, know, you say. Totally. Because the the masses are so easily influenced. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, we all fall into it at some point. But right. I definitely think that what people say that's why um like I mentioned earlier, I went to the Best Summit Mucho Fest. Like mm-hmm. online everyone's posting like it was so great, it was amazing, blah blah. Sure. It was so scary. Like it was, really? it was Why? such a scary festival because what? so you show up 
And the way they set up, so it was at the Dodger parking lot stadium. Uh Um, At the Dodger stadium parking lot. Sorry about that. (laughs) And so you like walk in and there's a mass, like a mass of people. I literally kept thinking in my head, like we're literally ants. I'm like meaningless in this huge pile of people. There was no directions anywhere. Everyone was just kind of walking, like if you were at a swap meet. Okay. Um, there was no one working to uh, like to help you get to any stage. There was no. I at least I didn't see any water stations. There was nowhere to sit, and like every stage, the so the stages would spin. Okay. Like the next artist would be ready on the other side. Every time they would spin the stage, the sound would get fucked up. So it would be like a 30 minute delay of them trying to fix the sound. Sometimes while the artist was performing, I know one of the bands didn't even get any sounds and he was like really, really upset. Um, My sister-in-law ended up passing out and we like went up to a security guard and we were like, hey, like I really like I'm trying to get her to first aid. So we're over here. There's like a stampede of people. And then the first aid is all the way on the other side of the stadium. Oh, no. So it was just insane to me that people are posting like, oh, I had a great time. Like people are lying, whatever, because I think that the whoever um, organized it didn't really take into account the safety of the people. Mm. But can you also like, but can we also like maybe other people's experience did go good. You know what I mean? For like sure. just You know what I mean? I, I'm not inviting your experience. I'm pretty sure that sounds no, no, shitty no, no. as yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's just wild. wild how like you p- people will be in like the same like places and have completely different like experiences. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because right. you said like how could people be posting like I had a good experience and you're like bitch no the fuck I didn't. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> not, because, not because I didn't right. specifically. Yeah. I just think more so that because thankfully nothing did but yeah. I know for a fact if something would have gone wrong, if someone would have gotten in a fight, if someone yeah. would have started shoving, it would have sure. not been controlled. No, sure. no, not even a little bit yeah. of control. Like, wow. I know there was no way of me getting out of there. There's, I left early. The security, there's like no security. No security. Nothing. No one was what? working there. On God, the food that they were giving there was pretty much like, you know how, like, when you go to a concert or a game, there's people selling hot dogs outside? Yeah, they for literally, sure. I can almost promise you, they went outside to them and they're like, hey, do you want to sell the food inside? Oh my like, God. Do you want to sell these hot dogs inside? What? So, so a lot of festivals lately have been really messy like that. Yeah, huh? and that's huge, what I'm saying. Like, huge. if how do you like? And honestly, thank God I didn't think about it when I was there. But I thought about like after I was like, oh my God, this is probably what people felt like at the Travis Scott concert. Yeah, like, right. Just it's what it sounded like. It's right. it was honestly so scary. I left because I felt what happened to your um, sister in law. Yeah, she just wow. got overwhelmed with the like we were walking through like we were walking like this. Oh shit! Like that's, we were literally holding. Dude, that's hands. already no like way. unsafe. Yeah, exactly, and there's sure. no clear signs for the exit. Like yeah. no clear signs for water. You know what I mean? There's no food available to you. Yeah. The way it was set up too, like this is the stage and all around here is a 21 and over section but it doesn't tell you that so then you get through all the masses of walking like that you want to go to like get water and they're like oh no like it's not no way like it's 21 and i mean i wasn't not not everyone i was with was 21 and over so we were like oh shit what do we do yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. it was honestly a hot mess i I get that people had fun but i also think they didn't really think about the safety of yeah yeah dude that reminds me of the woodstock 99 the did you guys, did you guys, did you watch the documentary? Did you watch No, it? no, no. So Woodstock 99 was, oh my gosh, unreal. It's like Travis Scott mm-hmm. times a super elevated testosterone in the 90s. Like, no way. It's like they wanted to re- revisit like Woodstock 69, which is, oh, peace, love, rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Like, right, right, right. Do your thing. Everyone's vibing and, and. You know, it was like grass fields and sitting down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They tried to do the same thing, but instead on a tarmac at a uh, old Air Force base. So everything's on concrete. Okay. But it was underfunded mm-hmm. for water, like the water fountains and whatnot. Mm-hmm. All they ran out really quick. The porta potties, uh, all overflow, like were overflowing. There's a camping section and whatnot. So everyone's there for three days. Oh wow! And by the second day, they've already ran out of water. And the porta potties overflow like had overflown what? so much it led to the water pipes. So people trying to get water had like shit water. Oh my god! So there's people coming out with this thing called trench mouth where their mouth gets like every disease, <gasps> like everything. So like cold sores, herpes, whatever. Oh my god! STD someone may have had at Ooh. that time, and it was just it was chaos. No food. Like and then the wa- I mean a water bottle in the nineties at in that time was like eight dollars and then the they fuck? changed it to like eleven dollars like they still with mm-hmm. because the water was like not drinkable they upped their prices up their prices no way and on top of it gets even crazier is that um by the third day people were pissed because they they noticed that they weren't prepared for yeah. something like this 
And as the red hot chili peppers were coming on, the only way they could try to save the crowd was doing like a candlelight vigil for uh, the riots that were going on, uh -huh. I believe. I Don't quote me on that, but I think it was for that. Yeah. But the people were so mad already, they started fires in <gasps> the event. So there's like maybe eight or nine fires, people what? passing out, the speaker towers they were tossing over. <gasps> craziness and that's no one can do anything that's what i'm saying like yeah. I, and you you get into such a mob mentality when you're in like Ooh, yeah. surrounded like that because yeah. that's i that was one of the things i felt bad about too someone um so i don't know if you guys know a lot of oh yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah sure. it's a um they're like a band from spain but when they i that, that was the first that i i got to but they came out like 40 minutes late mm -hmm. and people started like screaming and like booing and i was like man like that sucks because it's not the artist's right. fault you know what i mean right. and i could tell they were feeling like a little uncomfortable and like the i can see the sound guy like getting really worried so really? i understood but i just i don't understand why they allowed to create such a huge lineup with such huge latin artists and not have any budget for seats, for water, for restrooms availability. Right. You know what I mean? I think they like shut down the merch at like midday. So no yeah. one even, you know, just stuff what? like that that I'm like, dude, this dude, is insane. I'm such a huge like conspiracy theorist. I feel like, you know, like when shit's like hitting the fan, like with the mm -hmm. world, like, like, sh like there's a lot going on that, you know, the people in control don't want you to be paying attention right, to. I feel like right. they're just like, bro, pull these fucking festivals out of your ass. Let's try to get these people preoccupied, Damn. going to music, yeah. like just festivals, like going to For concerts, sure. like watching all this like BS like on the internet. Probably. Like, right. TikTok, it's algorithm is creepy as fuck. I don't That's know about you fuck. guys, dude, but it's already happened to me like five times where I'll be sitting like thinking about something like random as fuck. Oh, Next yeah. thing you know, it'll come up on my TikTok. The exact it's... thing I was thinking, didn't even speak it, didn't even like talk about it recently, nothing, sure. like a random ass thought. And my algorithm will bring it up on my timeline, bro. That's it's happened to me chill. like five times. And I'm always Oof. just sitting there like, bro, I don't fucking doubt that they already figured out some kind of way to really like, you know, For they sure. say that everything's energy, right? Your thoughts mm -hmm. are energy, right. like everything's right. energy, like that they've found a way to really just kind of like record your like fucking like brain, like vibrations right. and they're like able to read them shit and like keep you more like on this fucking like app. I think Dude. it's kind of like how when, um, because your mic's on. What's that? Like your mic is on on your phone. Yeah. So yeah. whatever you like, even if you just mention anything outside. I don't, but that's really? the thing. I swear, that's what creeps me the fuck out. Especially if you got Hey Siri. Yes. Oh, hell no. Yeah, she's dude. so annoying to me. Oh, I have yeah. that bitch turned off. Uh, me too. But that's she the be, crazy she thing. She be listening, man. Yeah. She be listening. Dude, that's the craziest thing. And like, for example, one time um, I saw like this video on my TikTok, right? Like, and it, I forgot what it was about, but it was something that really intrigued me mm -hmm. and I really loved it so much. And sure. I felt really intensely about it. She was showing something. And I remember mm -hmm. like, you know, and that day it had already been like two weeks later from that point. And I remember this day I was thinking about that video, but I didn't mention it. I didn't talk about it. I didn't like say anything, mm -hmm. but I kept thinking in my head like, damn, like I, I was just trying to remember what was this girl's name? Like. I'm trying to find like the video and I kept mm -hmm. picturing the like the video in my head Whoa. and like just like what what she was talking about and like dude like two minutes later it came up on my timeline. That's not true. And little things like that have been happening. Like it's been like six sc you? six scenarios, bro, where it's like I dude. think about something like very like hard. I I, I promise you, I You're don't talking. talk about it. I don't mm -hmm. mention it. Right. It's just a thought and it just it comes up on my fucking timeline. Probably. So, honestly, wow. anybody watching, try it. You try it too. No, like, no, no. I believe you because it happens yeah, to me. I'm but like, to me, I'm like, wow, that's so convenient. I was just thinking about just this. Just tape my microphone Thank real quick. <laughs> no, dude, but has that happened to you? Do you feel like, I don't know, do you oh, notice yeah. things like this? On TikTok especially. Yeah. Like, yes. even like exact, like, like memes like old vines yeah for example. yeah Watch, we're all gonna get old vines popping yeah. up or something yeah. but I, I it's getting crazier now because the, the that kind of like technology to like stock you know mm, what i yeah. mean ultimately like sell your data is now public yeah yes. now you could just ha pay a subscription and have access to whoever the fuck you want yeah. everything they have and it's just dangerous yeah. like can i you ask I mean? you like being in the music industry like do you are you mm. a conspiracy there is like you do, do you feel you know dabble. because you're around a lot of celebrities mm -hmm. and stuff so do you feel For like sure. you're like mm, something's going on here i, I don't know been, if you talk about it but no, no, no <laughs> you're fine. Some, i've thought about it honestly it, and it came back is like a, a huge perspective change was that i was talking to these people like 
they're, and they're up there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Doing their, their big business. But at the end of the day, I was like, honestly, I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? And it was something I had to, I was told as mm-hmm. well. They're like, dude, like we're just fucking people. Like, relax we don't right, really right, figure right. it out either but there's been there's been instances where i've like felt suspicious in mm. like a certain thing but i didn't want to overthink it because i was just like i don't want to carry that energy into right right it. right you know what i mean but outside of it you you never know like I, like girls going to dubai like have you guys heard of that like, no the girl i guess some girls <laughs> will go to dubai for money but then they're also like horribly tortured like sexually abused but then they come back and they're like on america's next top model with millions what? of dollars it's wild that's my conspiracy about like, what like, that just, they like, go to dubai any rent like random women can do that i guess so yeah <laughs> all, where some, do I i'm like that? ew where I'm like, actually, I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> no. no dude what the fuck it's that's just, insane i had never heard of that wild. it gets wild and that's tied into the music industry I get, or like any of the entertainment yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. any of the entertainment stuff. A lot of the like music industry is like, you'll see a lot of kooky people because we work at weird hours. Yeah. Weird oh, right, right, everyone's, right. Everyone's doing their own thing. Because our night owls. I've seen a lot of drugs. Like you go to a you know studio I mean? that like, like books several right. artists or how are you like signed or are you doing, we you work from home? Uh, like so what's I, your vibe right now? Oh yeah. Uh, I do freelance stuff. Okay. So like uh, ghost writing, like ghost producing, uh, I'll produce with people. I'll co-write stuff okay. with, with some people. I do like my, my own thing too, but I do it all independent. Like I never really wanted somebody to take my creative control and play mm-hmm. with it. You know what I mean? Especially with more people I don't know. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, okay, well the vision's kind of getting lost. You know, it's yeah. kind of Cause now you're gonna have to manage yourself through them. Yeah. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so like I do have a manager and she's a gangster, like she helps in the oh the trippiest of ways. I told her my mental health was going. I'm like, oh I don't feel too good. I feel depressed and whatnot. She's like, pause, go clean your car. And Aww. then come back and tell me how you feel. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. It was a, you know, just yeah. let it go over. Went and cleaned my car, and I was so stoked. I like went over to my mom's house. I'm like, hey, mom, check this shit out. <laughs> car's fucking clean. You know That's is, super but, dope. So she keeps you kind of grounded. She keeps me grounded. Yeah. She makes these super dope pendants. And nice. Stuff. She's like, Love that. So she's into energy. like spirituality. Super, super. She's a numerologist. Oh, what's so that? She, uh, so she studies the numbers and the. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. like how deep it runs, but she pretty much studies like patterns within numbers. Oh, okay. And, and the, like, I think they also look at like the numbers from like the days you were born, the day you were born, yeah. the time. Right. And like that is supposed to tell you like about you, about your life path. Crazy. Right. And people will literally read like your, you could tell them like your birthday. I think mm-hmm. it is your, the time you were born and like the place and like, it'll look like the coordinates oh, like, from the place you were born. Oh, wow. And yeah, like, and all those numbers like will, oh, and also like the number of letters in your name. I, wow. I, I looked it up like on a website Whoa. one time, but I did it like I used this website one time for numerology and I put in like the info and then it gives you like a little, um, obviously to get you to buy like, you know, a bigger like version yeah, of yeah. it, but it'll give right. you like a little like teaser and do it's like accurate as fuck. I'm not that's gonna lie. It's wild. a little wild. It's a little scary, that's but crazy. that's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I don't doubt that it's like. I feel like it's that's real. super crazy. That's wild. Do you feel Honestly. like um she guides you kind of like she influences you a little bit on who you collab with and stuff like that? Uh, so when it comes to that, we like have like discussions, seeing what's like best. Yeah, like uh, if it matches your energy. For what? Yeah, for that and um. She more or less uh, helps guide me in a direction where, like, if I do work with somebody that she might not, like, be easy with or has, like, a you know, an intuition that's, like, slightly mm-hmm. off, she'll make sure I don't fumble. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She'll make sure it's, like, even I'm I'm not getting cut out, mm-hmm. like, different. I'm not, I don't really care for the money. That's why I have people to do the business. But, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, she'll just make sure it's, like, worthwhile. Like, I, I just recently had a kid... Uh, hit me up for this new genre I haven't worked on called glitch pop. Mm-hmm. And I'm not too familiar with it, but he sent me this, this one beat. And I was like, this is not my favorite thing to listen mm-hmm. to. Cause it was just like underproduced. And mm-hmm. I guess that's why he reached out and whatnot. But, uh, she makes sure that I'm learning the right things in order to incorporate that into like my own sauce. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's super cool. Super energetic though. Like we, I don't know, like the numbers and then like 
you know, benefits from collaborations and stuff mm-hmm. are like lackluster because you get to understand this person on a different mm-hmm. level. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Especially listening to their music. Like, right. Like one band I can say is the 1975. Mm-hmm. Just recently went and saw them. They're amazing. But a lot of their songs sound like cheesy marketed towards like high school girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But all he's singing about is his heroin addictions. They're like they bangers doing though. Bangers, I know. I was like, yeah, bangers. I love them. Okay. I fucking love them, bro. Dude, <laughs> That's so good. Their shows are fucking wild. That's so fun. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go wild. next time they have one. It's like theatrical. Yeah. Nice. Like super theatrical. They, like, they, they have a performance. A super big performance. Yeah. It was set up as a house. Oh, wow. And when they came in on stage, the uh, I think it was the keyboard player, the bassist, was turning on the lights as oh, the songs so are coming sick. on and whatnot. Oh, that's dope. And it's like motivational. Like it got to a point where it was kind of inspiring. Yeah, and then nice. they come and hit all the old school bangers right yeah. in the second oh. half. They're like, all right, we're still here. You know what See, I mean? That's what I meant with Bad Bunny. Like I feel like he wasn't putting on a show. Like yeah. he was just there kind of karaokeing to his own songs. Yeah. Like I wanted to see like like an ex- I wanted an experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's no, super for sure. Cool. And, and that's true. Mm-hmm. Like like I feel like I'm, like the number one artist right now. I feel like he's super global right now. Like mm. he's like right. he you know we'll give him his flowers, but he really you're right. He sh- he I really like robbed he my ass. Especially how, with how expensive those tickets were. You yeah, think, for sure. How much were they? He, I spent seven hundred on. I bought two and but I spent seven hundred. People are paying what? like a grand, two yeah. grand, and my seats weren't like that great. I just went because my it was my little brother's birthday. Were you birthday. on the floor? No. 700 fucks for dude damn, like that's why floor seats yeah. were like mm. two grand like people were even paying up to like four grand mm. dude what? like people were yeah. literally i i bad. only did it because i wild. i owed my little brother two birthday gifts and one christmas gift so i was wow. like all right here it is for you buddy like i felt bad <laughs> and you're like and don't ask me it's shit for the up. next couple yeah. years <laughs> <laughs> right. oh my god yeah that's crazy do you um i have a question so when you collab with artists do you do you feel like you guys connect <gasps> because like do you feel like your music is intimate do you feel like I you have so. to actually? Do you I, yeah. feel like you have to, or do you ever feel like sometimes it's just a collab? I would say honestly, if it if they start coming out and they're like, "Here, I'm gonna kick you this amount of money to do this and this," then it's like less of a conversation. I'm like, mm-hmm. "Okay, I get it. You want something like yeah. if you're providing me with paying for my time, I guess." Then yeah, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. More often, than not, I like to like meet up with them over like yeah. a beer or coffee, like mm-hmm. chit chat, get yeah. to know who this person is. Yeah. It teaches you a lot about like how they work. You yeah. know what I mean? And that, ultimately it leads to like really good friendships which is what i've noticed but once you know them at like that core you can start figuring out what works for them before they even know what works for them Mm, you know what i mean so it kind of gives you a little bit of leverage but and when they come for you just kind of like offering you money do you feel like you add your own more of your own style to the songs you're producing i would say sometimes like if it comes to from like a halfway produced song then i'll like throw in a little bit of swagger and i'll just little by little and i'll send them demos be like how are we feeling you mm-hmm. know what i mean back oh and okay forth. cool but there's a lot of people who are very specific and then there's also a lot of things that you kind of have to hear out yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i watched a really cool uh it was like a college lesson the other day and the guy was mixing an akon song mm-hmm. and akon really likes his voice to sound like that auto tune yeah but also very natural mm-hmm. so he like underproduced it almost i mean he still produced it very nicely mm-hmm. but he underproduced his vocal just because that's how he wants it and usually that's how it comes cool to, you know what i mean some people are really like no actually this is what I want. Whatever you got going ain't it. Like, I want to, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? But that's pretty much it. I saw this, because I know you said you, you weren't signed. I saw this mm-hmm. video that talked about how a lot of um, record labels actually have, like, hundreds of, like, artists signed. But they do that purpose, like, on purpose so that they can be in control of, like, who's popping, you know? Like, so mm-hmm. they don't want, like, you know, mm-hmm. other people to overshine them. You know, so since they have control of their music when their For music sure. drops and things like that. They'll, like, sign all these, like, people, but then, like, they'll also stop you from, like, you know, dropping music and things like that. Right, Um, right. Have you heard that in the industry? Like, has anyone warned you about that? We're all trying to get the secrets from the industry. We're like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, they have, uh, I mean, there's so many, like, so many interesting stories, and I find them all to be, like, more, like, situational. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see a lot of artists that have, like, super fire tunes all Mm -hmm. out independent, like Chance the Rapper, like he was, or Russ, you know what I mean? Like, they all were all independent all the way up, which is what carried them through to a successful career, sometimes without a label. Sometimes they'll sign with that label just Mm -hmm. for, like, distribution or, like, promotions and whatnot, just pushing them 
almost. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of kids who have like one hit like on TikTok. You know what I mean? And then the, a label will sign them and not, you know, air out the contract yeah. or whatever. And like Lil Xan, like a crazy story. And could quote me if I'm wrong, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. from when it looked like he got promised a deal, he mm -hmm. was making these songs, they were really good songs, and then you just stopped hearing from him. Mm -hmm. From what I know or from conversations we've had is that he was given the money, which was supposed to go to like his engineers, his producers, like songwriters, mm -hmm. his studio time, like all that stuff, but he blew it on like Bugattis or, no like, or, or like Mercedes, like a bunch of cars, a bunch of whole night, right. a lot of nice things, but he didn't sell like the quota the label was looking for in a contract. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of like the, the label owns all of his music. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? It's kind of, I watched this movie called Dolomite Is My Name. And it's about uh, Rudy Ray Moore. He was just an old school uh, comedian slash like singer performer. Mm -hmm. And the one of the biggest themes was uh, however you can make it happen, just make it happen. No, I'll be good in the end. And a big conversation that came from that was the label uh, people that were working with him mm -hmm. were telling him like you're gonna we're gonna own all your music if this movie doesn't work you wanted to make a movie oh my god is that the one with eddie murphy yeah oh my god yes. i was like wait this movie sounds so familiar you know what i mean it's yeah, like yeah, filming yeah. a movie and whatnot yeah but there's a lot of stuff like that too like it's it's pretty much just a lot of business man yeah like, so all the conversations and does the it take business. away from like the passion of music sometimes it sounds like sometimes it, it yeah. does sometimes it especially like if you get numbers in your head, mm -hmm. like if you think that a Spotify stream's treating you yeah. to a nice dinner, you, oh my goodness, you better start posting elsewhere too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you only make like point zero zero three cents a play. Oh you know wow! What I mean? And a lot of people will like let the number get to their head that they're mm -hmm. getting. Oh, I have discourage them a hundred thousand hits on this one song and whatnot, and then all of a sudden they think they're like a mm -hmm. goat. You know what I mean? It gets really bloated and congested damn so how do you not how do you mean like how to keep yourself from losing the passion uh i spend a lot of time just like on my own like i try to be more like aware of what's going on like if someone man i wish i wish i would have heard it earlier but i heard it it was like halfway through uh my second ep that came out and i was talking to somebody and they're like you know what dude like it doesn't fucking matter if you have a million hits, or if you would just have one. You made mm -hmm. a song, and mm -hmm. at least one person's listening. Mm -hmm. If you can focus on who that person is, then then dig deeper in that. And the, the one method that I learned was uh, I was sitting with, I like to call him a shaman, because we're in the middle of a forest out in Georgia. Nice. And at this time, I was going through this huge like mental health change, huge, like, oh, I need to fine-tune myself sort of yeah so i went clean off everything i was smoking a bunch of weed drinking i was mm -hmm. nicotine obviously and <laughs> you know totally cut all that shit off even sugar and gluten and he he looked at me and he was like you need to create a muse i want you to detail two characters uh, fictional everything they do from the way they wake up the way they wake up to what time to how they interact with the world how the world interacts with them but one condition, they're Chief Davies' biggest fans. So if you can't write, write for them. Aww. Changed my mind on everything. I was like, you're right, because one person's always listening. That's crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so inspirational yeah. for you and us. Right? Because sometimes you. you do let the numbers kind of get to your head and you get a little discouraged. And the crazy right. thing is, like, I was like, I forgot where I heard it, but it's like once you start, you know, people start writing music, you know, doing a podcast acting you know doing all mm -hmm. of these like creative endeavors because they enjoy it you know because it's right. fun because mm -hmm. it's their passion because you know obviously of course you know getting paid and being able to live off that is like right. amazing you know mm -hmm. and it would be like dope if everyone could do that For but sure. i feel like once this like i forgot what i was listening might have been a podcast but they were saying how once you start you know losing sight of just doing it because it brings you joy that's when you will create more friction for like whatever blessing you want to come with it whether it be mm -hmm. like money or like you know fame or whatever it is that you want with for it sure. and it's like it, sure. when you start focusing on that and and like what you want to get out of it instead of just doing it for your pure enjoyment yeah. right. you'll create more friction than like if you just focus on like 
what you're doing maybe it's not like the best maybe you like come short one day or maybe Mm -hmm. you know you're having a bad day all these things but if you just keep doing it you know for simple like pure enjoyment you'll get farther than when you start like beating yourself up about like numbers and about like views that drives like a strong line between like being kind of selfish and having an ego because like numbers will bring that ego yeah but selfishness sometimes brings the core of why you're doing it yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean like like a huge quote I love was by David Bowie and I can't quote it exactly, but he was like, uh, when I'm selfish with my work, it's when I make the best work because I know it's my best work. Yeah. Like it's my thing. And usually that that's the case. Like yeah. that's why we love so many like distinct artists, you mm-hmm. know, like you listen to SZA and her voice sounds this way. Yeah. Or then you listen to like Mariah Carey and she sounds this way, but y'all love it differently for Right, right, right. Reasons and whatnot. It's just trippy. And it, and that also, sorry, and that also gives me kind of like you know how they say like you you know best like for yourself. You know, like Mm -hmm. if you listen to your intuition, like you're good. Like make your own choices without like the noise of like the people around you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you'll create like your best work. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and I think it comes down to too that if you. Because, you know, you listen to music and you watch movies and all of that because you want to relate. Right. So I think once you start, like, if you, like how, pretty much how you're saying, like, if you stay true to yourself, someone's bound to be like, hey, you know what? I, I feel that. I right. fuck with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's exactly what I was thinking. That makes sense mm-hmm. to me right now. Exactly. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. for a second. And exactly. I loved earlier you said, too, like, oh, I'm not, like, in it for the money. Like, I love that for you sure. said that. Because oh, it, it does sure. definitely... Um, I guess portray once you start actually making the work. Right. It, yeah, and it's mm. hard. I, mean, I imagine it's hard, you know, mm. as like an artist, you know, and wanting that to be like, you know, everything if in a sense. Like right. it's hard to kind of imagine to be like, I'm not doing this for the money because I think it's like, you know, it would be nice to yeah, be able yeah, to live yeah. off. Right. I mean, I'm not saying no to the money. No, no, no. no, right. oh, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I feel like it's it says a lot, you know, yeah. when you're for able sure. to, when you come to a point where you're able to separate yourself and just kind of mm-hmm. be like, okay, like if it comes like um, great, you know, like, right. and that that's a blessing, yeah. you know, but if for not, sure. like I'm still okay. Like I'm my, my music is still amazing, yeah. even if I don't get paid for it. Like, for sure. I'm having a great time. You know, it's, like, my passion. Mm-hmm. You know, I read in your bio that you play several instruments, right? What is it? Multi? Mm-hmm. What is the word? Uh, multi-instrumentalist. Yes, yeah. sorry. Nice. Like a long yeah. word, but, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's, that's so dope. Thanks. So, it's, like, dude, like, you're super talented. Like, you have, like, you. a lot. Well, you gotta, you know, I learned that you have to just enjoy, like, where you're going. Like, if you have a goal, you know what I mean? Like, let's say money's the goal. When mm-hmm. you're looking for your first 100K... You're not going to look past to your first million ever, but a lot of people will get to that first goal and they'll stop just because they, mm. they see it. No, dude, pick up what you like in that one area of your trail mm. and keep it pushing. Yeah. Keep nice. it fucking pushing because whatever's going to come next is just another milestone rather than right. a goal. And I, yeah, know? and I feel like um, I, I one time I read this quote that changed like how I viewed money because a lot of people you know they say oh they want money you know and and obviously like living in this society where you need money for everything you know Mm -hmm. it's tough um because we need it to live to survive right but um money isn't like a goal like it's it's just an it's just a means to an end if that makes sense yeah it's literally like money um you don't really want money you know what what feeling are you going to get when you get money you know you're going to be able to feel like stress-free you want to be able to you know have control over your own time you want to be able to you know not feel stressed out like that's what you really want Mm -hmm. you don't really want money you just want like the comfort of knowing you know that you're okay and you know that by getting money like a lot of your problems will be like eliminated for sure and if people just focused on that feeling that they want instead of like focusing on money money. like the money it'll be you'll be better off for sure when you uh make your music do you feel like you do it with an intent with like um like how some people are like, oh, I want my music to be played at parties or I want my music to be mm-hmm. listened by this. Like, do you ever feel like you make your music and with an intent like I, that? I do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a lot of like my own personal stuff, a lot of my intent is like, and it's really shocking because I never really like it being in the foreground. Mm-hmm. And I, so I hopped into the bedroom pop scene it was because I wanted to be clicked on, played in the background and then listen to when it's really up front. So like a lot of my intention comes in parts and so i'll write like i have a whole book that i just write poems in i'm okay. just like i love this i love this and it's all about what i'm feeling in that time and then i come back to it like if i if i want inspiration then all of a sudden each thing starts Popping standing out, out oh, to nice. me and whatnot and then i'm like i really wrote this six months ago but this is what i meant mm-hmm. and then i try to 
force that into it. And then mainly the intention is like to be just understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not easily understood because I speak in a metaphor the whole time. This is why my intention is to make sure it's, you know, carried through. Otherwise, it's chill enough to just be put on in the background. You know, it's crazy. I was listening to your music. And when I was listening to it, I, I feel like whenever I listen to music, I try to... I think of it in a movie and I'm like, where would this song play during <laughs> the movie? Dope. I love that. Yeah, yes, so yes. your songs, I was listening to them and I was like, man, like if I was writing my coming of age movie, like I could totally picture this in like <laughs> one of like, yeah. kind of like you said, like where you're kind of like at a party scene and you're like vibing with people and I like mm. your songs playing in the background. I love that. Like, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, like the scene starts to get more intense and the song kind of starts to, yeah, yeah, build yeah, yeah, into yeah. It. I love that. Exactly. That's, uh, that's kind of, that's why I was asking because like every time I listen. Like prom night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love coming of age movies so i try to listen to that but i was always like man like i wonder i just like listening i feel like that's where because i'm not like not that i'm not huge on music it's just more of like you know how people like actively go online and try to find new music constantly yeah i mostly find my music through movies really like i'll watch a movie and i'm like this is a dope ass song like where is this from so you like picking up the vibe first and then like oh shit i live this yeah yeah yeah, exactly and then i I listen to lyrics and i'm like oh my god like this is this is exactly what i was feeling tears (laughs) (laughs) sobbing my eyeballs out yeah damn i I feel that that. okay so um, i wanted to ask you since you're what's what's the name of it sound engineer or Or like audio engineer audio engineer Mm -hmm. okay okay dope okay so um Earlier when you said that you wrote poetry, mm-hmm. I write poetry too. And oh, yeah. yeah, and I haven't done it in a while. I'm not gonna lie, I started for the wrong reasons. Okay. I started dating this guy and at that time I didn't have any oh, it's a deep hobbies. poetry. Huh? It's a deep poetry. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's that kind of poetry, you know? <laughs> Love it. Um and I didn't have any hobbies per se. Um I feel like I grew up in a home was it you the one that made that comment one time that said like you're raised by your TV? yeah yeah i uh, like wholeheartedly like agree with that like my parents were pretty like very like emotionally unavailable damn this is going like sidetracking anyways (laughs) um so i feel like i was like raised by my tv as well like i just watched a shit ton of tv and i feel like that made me be like a hopeless romantic even more than seeing my mom just be like a stay-at-home mom so i always envisioned my life being like i'm gonna be a stay-at-home mom even though i didn't think it consciously right i feel like subconsciously i just always felt like I was gonna be a stay at home mom. Like, I get you. she didn't you felt have, like you were just naturally gonna go towards that. Yeah, like she didn't have you. any like job or any hobbies. Mm. Like, she was just a mom and a wife and sure. a, a cook and mm. a maid. I was just saying, like, she was like all these things, you <laughs> know, like mom a mom, things, a full yeah. mom thing, you know? Right <laughs> literally, <laughs> right. literally. So I was just like, I met this guy one time and he had like so many hobbies, like super really? creative. Like he just did like everything. For he sure. dabbled in everything. And I was completely like in awe of that. Like I admired that so much because I never understood how people had like so many hobbies, like and passions. Like mm-hmm. how, how mm-hmm. are you creative? Like what? Like I just always felt like sure. I just wasn't a creative person. Like I just, for me, it was just like going to school and I was just doing good in school For to go sure. to college like whatever like right. the generic you know american, american dream lifestyle, yeah right. yeah yep. so that was just kind of like my thing and i i always i always felt like cheated if that made sense like i didn't it was so unfair to me like seeing all these kids like have all these like cool things that they were good at and i just felt like i didn't have like one inch of like okay, a creative right. thing like i would get so jealous when yeah like right. the piano later i'm like what? I feel bitch. You. or like i could sing or like i can do this i can do that and i'd be like what do you mean like going how? to do backflips at gymnastics right. tonight yeah, i'm like well fuck you dude literally <laughs> getting scouted from my volleyball coach right now right like, I, literally <laughs> like it was just i just didn't understand like why not me you know like you. you know and it's like i didn't it didn't well, now I know that, you know, being creative is something you can learn. You know, like, yeah, it's everyone, sure. is, every human being is supposed to be creative, but we've just been, like, brainwashed to, like, be super, like... For sure. Just dumb. Like, you know, so... And brainwashed and, to ch- chase perfection. Dude. Right. Right? You know? It's so crazy. So, super. when I met this guy, um, not gonna lie, he was, he would just ask, like, he would, like, tell me, like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Like, and then when it would come... F- like my turn to speak about like what i was on at the time right. honestly all i would do is just party and drink and hang out with my friends and do dumb shit like For i sure. literally didn't you know and at that time i didn't see anything wrong with that like i didn't sure. i didn't look at my life and think oh like i'm a bum or anything like that like i, I was just like this i'm is just my life. i'm young like you know yeah. I'm, I'm having fun young and living you know yeah. like i'm totally i'm totally. fucked i'm getting fucked up every weekend like you know like i'm <laughs> living the life like what do you mean like you know but when I met him, 
is when I truly started like thinking like okay like there's more like you know like I could you yeah. know right. I could be having hobbies I could be Balance doing this I could be doing that like what can I dabble in you know yeah but I also didn't want to tell him that I didn't dabble in to in anything so I uh you growing told him your poetry yes okay oh, so wow. okay so growing up um I have this memory of when I was in second grade my it was like open house or something like that mm-hmm. and. Um, but it was like end of the year event or something like that. Sure. So it was an open house, something like that. But all the parents were like, you know, going to like the classroom and my teacher pulled my mom aside and told her like, Vanessa is like super advanced in like English, which is like amazing. Like Rad. she reads and writes like mm-hmm. she shouldn't be in second grade. Like when it comes to like reading. just like yeah, reading and sure. writing, yeah. it's like crazy. Hell yeah. And he was like, and I think that like she's really gifted like if you really nur- like nourish that mm-hmm. like it could be something and that's something that stayed with wow. me because like as a kid you know i remember being like okay like i did like reading you know i would always be in the library like right. checking out books reading like every time that you'd be like oh like write this like i would like write two pages and kids would just write like a little paragraph you know like i was just right. that kid when it came to writing and then high school, I took like poetry class writing and same, like every time I would write something, I would really pull it out of my ass because I just, sure. I wasn't taking it serious. It was mm-hmm. just more of like, I have to take this class and like, why not? Got it. But I always knew, I always felt like I had like a knack for it. For sure. Like if I would have like nourished it, like it, it, I could have definitely, even now I could still probably like. You know what's crazy sure. though? That for like sure. you probably pulled everything out of your ass, but it was just that your mind was just so naturally creative. Yeah. And I didn't even know it, yeah. you know? So that's kind kind of like so sorry i keep getting sidetracked but no, you're I, 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 I'm I love yeah so this guy um i told him oh yeah dude like i'm super into poetry like i write mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and he was like oh well i really liked him so he was like oh well, i would love like to like read your stuff one time like if right. you know if and I remember for like a week, I'd be like, oh, no, you can't. Like, it's really personal. It's really personal to me. <laughs> dude, I had nothing. Like, just turning around. Literally, I was just like, dude, like looking on Google. Just like, writing so because he's looking. Yeah. Literally, literally. Yeah. And I was just like, damn. But eventually, um, I used that <laughs> as like motivation to write because I just wanted like to have something to show for it. Because I already for said sure. it. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. you know, I have to show something right. for it. And I was actually like, like, I surprised myself with, like, the poems mm. that I came up with. I really wish I still had that book. I don't Word. I don't have it anymore. But I wrote, like, some really dope pieces. And I like to sing. I'm not a good singer. Living for it. And Living I always, dude, I always just felt like, man, I really wish that I could sing because I do have a knack for writing poetry. And I know that it's good. Thank you. You know and, what, though? Oh, I'm chilling, brother. Thank you. And I, I actually do. Please, sorry. Thank you. You and, know what, though? Singing can be learned. Like, you can learn to sing. No, yeah. yeah. I, True. And yeah. you probably have a voice that's like, like, you probably can sing. Maybe. Like, people getting signed to you. labels with the money. That's where that shit should be going to is vocal lessons sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're pursuing it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know? So, like, would you be able to make me sound good? <laughs> <laughs> let's run let's Dude, could you what? just anyways long story short anyways, i want to just like jump. put me in the stew i know right all right we're tapping in here we go five four has pound. anyone ever asked you that i have been asked that a lot of rappers trying to sing oh okay. Ma- mainly a lot of rappers like yo can you make me sound like this, like, I need this. <laughs> yeah well the one question i like to ask everyone is like what's the one song you know you can sing mm. like nearly spot on and then nice. i'll produce a song in that key just so okay. it's like if they oh. do write in that, you know, they can already sing in that key. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. We'll write the song in that key, and it's like, oh, you're already singing better than you thought you could. Yeah, okay. makes it like you. Oh, that's so cool! You could literally put them in a comfortable position. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that's super dope. Like uh, my favorite examples, like I'll write a lot of songs, and, and mind you, I'm not like an expert on theory. Like I was really tapping or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like C sharp minor. I'll write a whole bunch of random shit and then sing like the Smiths to it because it's some of it's in like the same key and yeah. whatnot, and it's like. Oh shit, I could sing. Me too. You know what I mean? Then I make a song that's in like D flat and I'm like, fuck. Like I sound like shit. I'm the most garbage. Which makes sense because I think too. Yeah, because I like to sing and I'll sing one song and then I'll be like, damn. I really sound like that. Like maybe I should just never sing again. <laughs> so bad. No, you know? And then I'll you. sing another song and I'm like, damn, I could really make it out I here. Like I'm gonna start singing. Or have like you ever like like sing a note and you really think 
thought you like hit that shit and like your siblings are listening they're like bro like ew <laughs> or they're like don't ever like oh i really be killing my vibe because i really thought i hit that Dude, shit. That's me. <laughs> i'll record myself singing and i'm like all right this is how i'm gonna improve like i have to listen to myself because right. i try not to listen to myself yeah and then i'll play it and i'm like this this is the end this that's is the start and end of my career right now that's the worst thing is everyone it's like very self-sabotaging listening to yourself yeah because you're like mm. fuck i literally hate my voice like <laughs> ever i i would say every song that i have out right now mm. i'm like not a fan of how i'm singing like <gasps> really? every single one of them Ooh. i'm just like this is like this is hurting and then sometimes i walk into like the living room and the fucking acoustics are solid and just beelining it I'd how do you totally overcome honest. that like that uh, imposter syndrome, I'm assuming, kind of sounds right. like where it's like, damn, like you put this out and maybe you felt proud of it in the moment, but then after you're just like, no, maybe it's not that great. The, afterwards, I would wait and I'm just like, I'll run it by a few people. I'm like, is this like, am I doing something? Like, yeah. there's am no, I doing something? Yeah, <laughs> am I doing something here? Like, is this working? Anything, please. And, the, and thank God I got like some true homies who are like, bro, you're hurting right now. Like, this uh. night, like go drink some tea. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chill out. Yeah. And some of them are like, yeah, nothing's distracting. But then that fucks me up because I'm like, well, if it doesn't distract you, it's going to distract this guy. Let's find out. You know? uh, okay. I find myself in like sometimes a bottomless pit of referencing my songs yeah. or like any song with like three to four other producers just to make sure that we're not crazy mm. and, or it's still fucked up from the night before. Like that's, <laughs> that's so super common. <laughs> Do you feel like you're like, like those people where you, you already know how you feel about it, but you're finding, you're trying to find that one person that's going to give you the exact answer that yeah. you want. I'm like, tell me what I want to hear. Yeah. Please. Like that's crazy. That's exactly what I was thinking. But right? you literally asked like six other people who gave you the complete opposite. Yeah. Does it right. ever cross your mind? Like maybe like, let's say you ask a couple people and they're all like, dude, honestly, like it's really not it. You know like it's not terrible mm -hmm. but it's just not it do you ever, does it ever For cross sure. your mind like you know they might not like it but there's people out there that will fuck with it that's the f most fucked thing about art i say fucked is a double-edged sword it's really nice but it's also really fucked is that it's like so subjective you really can't tell because like yeah. you'll find there's some kids who grew up listening to Beyonce, Mariah Carey, mm -hmm. fucking J, like all these like prime time Whitney Houston, prime time mm -hmm. singers and yeah, whatnot. Don't say J Lo, please. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not J Lo. Not but, but, <laughs> but they'll listen to all these like prime time singers who are like belting naturally. And they just got it. Yeah. And, yeah. And then all of a sudden they start listening to music that's only that, and then they hate like Anything like hip hop because yeah. it's not belting or like orchestrated wow. that way you know what that it's, is really that i feel like that really resonated with me you feel? I, I definitely think because i wasn't my like my, my parents like obviously you know they're immigrants they weren't really that big on showing me music for sure so i was always listening to radio music gotcha like mm -hmm. and i think definitely when i started like branching out even like with films like when i started watching more like mm -hmm. low budget films or like indie films i was like right. i was very critical and i had to kind of remind myself like okay there's so much like genres there's levels to that exactly yeah, yeah like not you. everyone's gonna freaking like what's that whistle mm. note the like mariah um, carrier on it yeah. like just because right. they can't do that doesn't mean they don't it's sound not. good yeah. And, then, yeah, dude. and do you also do you feel like some music or most music could be like an acquired taste like if Absolutely. you keep giving it like a chance over and over again like mm -hmm. the first couple chances might be a little rocky but over yes. time it might grow on you. Totally. There's one artist in specific named Gus Dapperton. And I really, he's an indie artist. I was listening okay. to him when he was like really early when he was doing his rough stuff. And I listened to one of the songs once. And I was like, this, I don't like this. So I'm going to switch it. I came back to it because the album cover was just so sick. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to it again. I'm like, wait, I do feel this. Hold on. Like suddenly I started losing kind of like the whole introductory weight on his voice and started mm -hmm. listening to the song itself mm -hmm. and i was like oh i'm actually like now i'm a huge fucking fan mm -hmm. but then again it's like it took it took me a while to like really adapt because it's not mariah carey it's not yeah. Celine, yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean it's not gonna be like steve lacy either it's just mm -hmm. him and that's but that's what makes me that's why i feel like everyone loves like their artists mm -hmm. is because that's what makes them them right you know what i mean like if you can't jump out and just try to be yeah. Beyonce. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? You might fall short. Do you, but. um like, I know you went to the Latin Grammys. Is there a lot of um 
like I guess coming up artists that get invited because I know you know on TV all you see is like the huge artists but like right. you don't see everyone else that's there mm -hmm. is there a lot of like kind of that people that are really trying to find their voice and like connect with um, like there, singers and stuff like that there really is honestly and actually more of them than there is like the big stars mm -hmm. and usually a lot more uh, people that are behind the scenes like the songwriters the producers even like the vocal producers because mm -hmm. there's like some sometimes in a studio there's a person that's in the vocal booth with you telling you you're fucking up like oh. sing maybe do this maybe this will work okay. or you're not you're not selling me on this like yeah. i need you to sell me on this like even those people and you'll find out that like including myself and like going to events early you know what i mean mm -hmm. or earlier events i was going through i'm like there's so much shit that goes into this mm -hmm. maybe i should take a step back and really see where i'm at because a, a lot of these upcoming artists they 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 come in and it's like they lose themselves up mm -hmm. in that sauce of trying to be the greatest yeah you know I mean? but to answer the question yeah you, there's a lot of up-and-coming artists and including myself like you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like sure. going and, and talking to all these people was a lot of folk i'm talking to some of the nicest fucking people like mm -hmm. i I really started digging into the Latin side of music about mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. And um, I think, I honestly think the Latin community within their music is so much more tight than any other community. Like you got the indie community and none of them want to work with anybody because indie, indie music, you know, there's like, oh, this is me, man. Like I love it's this. Competitive. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, like no room for. Exactly. You got the hip hop. You lose your sound. Like, right. They want to lose their sound. The hip hop crew who really is focused. They have one way of doing something yeah. like mm -hmm sometimes they're they're calling the studio up early like do you have this microphone and this compressor just to keep it consistent mm. you know what i mean you'll get a lot of that but in the latin community uh, when i was out there fuck dude anything from, anything from dembo regional to reggaeton mm -hmm. to uh, merengue like anything like, yeah they were all together okay. talking about making something out of nothing yeah and that's the yeah. most badass things because i was talking to dembo producers i was talking to regional producers mm -hmm. i was even talking to hip-hop producers i was talking to a whole bunch of them but everyone in that side of the game really wants to see each other win yeah. i was like that's you don't see this especially in san diego all the indie scene out there yeah yeah yeah. god forbid you fuck with someone's song <laughs> dude god forbid not to spite out no, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like and i think too latin music is so much easier to mix to get a little mix of everything you know like if you add right. a different kind of artist to an indie it'll kind of really change the sound of it right and i feel like with latin music you could pretty much put all the genres into one song. <laughs> totally, dude. Yeah. Totally. That's oh, super it's so sick. Wild. It's well, definitely so dope. I love that. What was your favorite part about going to the Grammys, the Latin Grammys? Honestly, meeting the people. Yeah. Meeting the people. Uh, and then, I mean, they did have a Duce bar at one point. But, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was meeting everybody. Like, everyone was really, really chill. And I it was, I guess, it was the learning experiences because everyone's coming from a different place, different story. You got. Fools from Miami, Texas, mm -hmm. Middle America, everywhere from California. And it was just, it was pretty much just meeting everybody, getting to understand where things are and where they're going. Yeah. Like, we popped in and had a, just through talking with somebody, had a totally on the spot studio session. Oh, just so went cool. And pulled up to a random studio in Vegas and made something happen. You know, I didn't really dip my fingers too far because mm -hmm. I just met everybody and yeah. I think the song yeah. was already there. But to be invited to yeah. that yeah. just shows a whole different heart. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so just for someone say, to bring you along in their creative process, even just as like a... Even just to kick it. Yeah. 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 It was super. Just to dance around the studio, catch a vibe, you know what That's I mean? That's so sick. Like, that was Dude. like my favorite part, my favorite part. How how do you know um, Dylan? Car how do you pronounce that? Yeah. Carbone. I met him there. Oh, you met him. I met him at the Grammys. Oh no way! Yeah, I mean, that's the guy who I who had the, the random on spot studio session. Oh, oh. so cool! Yep, yeah, yeah. so he went and kicked it. That dude is a G. <laughs> Let me tell that's you, that's crazy. Just... We know him. He... I, I was just yeah. telling him that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's her baby daddy who um, would Shot make the his music. Yeah, videos. make music. Yeah. Videos. Word, word. Oh, yeah. Do you ever need that? Heard that? Let me know. Heard that? I don't know Noted. why I didn't Noted. mention that it was your baby daddy. I was just like, oh, I know some dude, and I was Dylan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Just um, putting it to the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's just crazy when I saw you guys in the pictures together. I was like, what the f? Like, what a small world. That's right. exactly yeah, that's, that's what exactly talking about. what I told yeah. him. Because I was yeah. like, we met um, Chief Davy at a Me Too event. You yeah. Know? And it was dope. We connected there and we followed each other and next thing you know like you posting pictures of you and Dylan I'm like what the fuck yeah like, 
the hell? Exactly. That's what I'm telling no, him that, like, right. I, you know, we met him through here, but we knew Dylan from elsewhere, and yeah. now they're hanging out. Yeah. But they're people, like, you guys are just people from, like, you know, you're from San Diego, and Dylan's been here, so, right. like, the chances that you guys would connect, that's just so cool. It was wild, and, he, and he walked up, and mind you, like, I was taking notes, I'm like, this fool is, like, ultra extrovert with yeah, no ego. For sure. No fucking ego, as far as I know, and I'm just like, dude, this fool's fucking super chill, so he just yeah. chops it up, became homies there. Nice. You know, and, is, and I've and I've actually, it's funny because like I, um, I've stayed like at an Airbnb with him, like as a with a group of friends, and uh, he's like that, like twenty four seven, like so all the chill. times that I've been like around him. Mm-hmm. I he's love like it. that same energy. Like, Gotta get him the on the time. podcast. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I envy. I envy that energy. I'm just like sometimes my social battery vanishes. But to speak about the small world, one little sidebar. I was just yeah. telling her I have friends that are up in NorCal uh-huh. that when I lived up in NorCal for a little bit who watch your podcast. No. <laughs> and I I haven't yeah. talked to them in like seven years. I'm like, Oh, Whoa. no shit. Yeah, it's been like seven years and I haven't talked to them. I'm like, what the fuck? I see them liking the, like their names will pop oh, up on the cool. stuff. I'm like, oh, You're shit, like, okay. Dude, that's wild. I still feel shook like to this day that um, our podcast like has reached like all these places yeah yeah it's just wild like i was telling them before you got here that i got recognized at um universal studios <laughs> and I, but I was in a rush to get back in line because we just like we were at waiting at the simpsons line mm-hmm. so i ran to the restroom and i was like waiting for my like godson and i was like hurry up hurry up hurry up yeah and then he was coming out and this girl came up to me but i was assumed they're not talking to me for sure like i'm like oh there's somebody Dude, behind that still me. happens to me yeah and they're yeah. like hey and i was like hey and they're like you're from that podcast and i was like oh yeah but my like godson was coming out we got to run and i was like oh and she's like it's super funny and i was like thank you i gotta go bye i love you and then like i left and then the other day i was at zara i remember now i was at zara sure. blasted bro so high <laughs> and this girl comes up to me she's like where do i know you from and i was like oh uh, shit. Dude, uh, the, I, <laughs> my so... brain was malfunctioning she was so cute too like uh-huh. i remember her style was so like like I don't know, very specific and very very cutesy, and I was like staring sure. at her like, man, this girl is so fucking cute. Like, some leave me alone because I'm so high and I cannot process you talking to me. Word. Right now. She looked like Word. a character out of a movie. Uh, so I was like, oh my god, you're so nice. She's like, you're from that podcast, and I was like, yeah. And then I walked away awkward. Dude, Scene I two of the coming of age movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> I still feel like I don't. I like I was saying I was on live on Bessie's the other day, and like I was somebody was asking me because I was saying I got recognized at the In and Out drive through and at mm. the Chick Fil A drive through like a couple mm, days apart, far, and far. I was like, dude, like I still react very I don't I don't think awkward like I'm very like oh like dude like you know nice to meet mm-hmm. you yeah. like thank you for listening blah blah, blah but right. it feels so real because like I could tell that they get shy or nervous and. Bitch, I'm shy and nervous. Like, what the fuck? Like, because you? Like, you still feel like a normal, like, I feel like a regular person. Like, I don't, like, I literally right. just pull up and I just feel like I'm having a conversation, like, with friends, you know? Like, right. It's yeah. just, you know? Chilling. Does it feel like we're, like, no. About to post this for, like, thousands of people online? No. No. And then the right. crazy thing right. is, like, dude, I always think in my head, like, it's so wild to me, like, that I do this. I don't know. My brain just, like, you know, I see how many, like, views we get on YouTube, and, you know, it's in the thousands, which is cool, but I forget that people listen on Spotify and Apple, like, and podcasts, yeah. and it's, like, we have way more thousands of people that listen there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, like, wait, so it's, like, way more than that, and I'm always just, like... And then not I even that, off, like, the amount off. of yeah. people you reach with, like, Reels and TikTok. Right. Yeah. Especially with Reels these mm-hmm. days. The yeah. algorithm's working on the Reels right now. Yeah. Like, imagine someone's Word. thinking about you. Like, you're, oh, remember that one girl from elementary school? And then, like, the algorithm listens to their brain. Dude, and you oh, my God. Their, no, I would their, not uh, doubt you know, it. Bro. I would not doubt it. That's the crazy thing. That's crazy. Do you Talk ever about- think, like, your exes listen to your music? Oh, I know they do. Nice. Oh, do you <laughs> talk about, like, exes on your music? So, yes. <laughs> I wrote one out crazy as shit. I was cheated on three times. No, by the same person. Boom, boom, boom. Three different people. Oh, my God. And that you were in, like, committed relationships with mm-hmm. or situationships? I was in a committed relationship. That it was like sucks. Eight. And I was always in long-term ones. I was a little hopeless romantic, so I was mm. like, Wait, oh, I'm sorry. How old are you? 22. Oh, okay. A baby. But, um... Baby. What's it called? Fuck, I feel old. <laughs> That's why it's so old. We have to have an age limit for guests now because they're making me feel old I'm as hell. Stop. Sorry. Sorry. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. I know. He was like, well, I'll say I'm 30. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm 35. Yes. Um, I was born in 90. <laughs> <You're even laughs> <that way. laughs> Some, no, somewhere in the 90s. I know, right? But, uh, wait, what was the question? The, Three you cheated, cheated on. on. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I wrote a whole album. Or a whole EP called 
it's not about who's loving me. It's about you and who keeps me company. And I named it that long ass title. I was just like, this is me. Like, I I need this. Okay. And I wrote every song detailing a different, like, sensation between all three of them. From understanding and, like, denial Mm -hmm. all the way to, like, being naive and just cutting shit if I needed to. Okay. So, like, uh, or even, like, I have one song called Lavender Seams. And in the end of the song, it was written about how I broke up with somebody we mm-hmm. went and we did the thing in the car and then i left yeah like, after. anyways thanks yeah. and you never spoke yeah. to him again no nah. that's wild dipped out later but it's what they deserve yeah right <laughs> i feel special <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching yeah. this this is what you get yeah that's what you get dude sorry about look it. at him now this is sorry <laughs> <laughs> not really but no but yeah that, I, did, I did write a lot of songs about love getting like finding like where it all lies and whatnot or even like on one of them called fairground was a vibe where you know you ever like like go to a certain place let's say Mm -hmm. at times if you were single like you go to a certain place you could be whoever the fuck you wanted to in that place like say disneyland yeah Mm -hmm. you go with like the hummies everyone's at disneyland you make eye contact with this attractive person all of a Mm -hmm. sudden you're a different human in that time yeah yeah. like i write songs Mm -hmm. too that's like chasing that feeling wow that's so that's so specific too super Uh, that's why i was thinking i'm like no one's gonna really understand this but i like it it's a vibe that's cool because that is true kind of like you know or like when you're in an airport and you're like everybody's in love with me right now the airport i could be anybody i can literally be any person that i want i could change whoever i am right now that's cool it's crazy how you feel it physically like you feel like a ting in your body like especially when you make eye contact with someone you find attractive and you immediately it's like you turn like robot mode yeah you even change your demeanor while you're sitting you're like okay let me <laughs> Posture. I'm mysterious. I'm mysterious. Literally, literally. Pick up a book. Pick a book, book right now. I like, feel. <laughs> I write poetry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's like, so hilarious. Like, go up to him. Hey, I drew you. Oh a stick my. figure. A dream. Freaking Titanic. Check shit. this out. Dude. <laughs> Art dead. subjective. Just enjoy it. No, really. <laughs> like, no, and I feel like that's kind of like, like you said earlier, like we were brainwashed to like chase perfection when really what we should be chasing is connection. You know, like Mm. that's really what art does, you know, music, acting, like any form of art that you do. It's really just about connecting. Cause like, imagine you were the only person on earth. Would you, I mean, you likely would still do those things, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously like to keep your sanity, if you were the only person on earth, but like, ultimately when you do these things like it's to share it with others everything right. i feel like in life is yeah, to share with sure. others right. you know so it's like what's you know if you what's why well, try to draw some i feel like that's kind of like where i try to tell myself like because i feel like i went through like a, a phase where i also like wanted to draw and like paint and stuff mm. but i would always i always beat myself up that it's not good enough you know like these standards that i have in my head mm-hmm. and um I've been trying to tell myself to like not rush the process. Like it's just right. about consistency. Yeah. And consistency. like, you know, eventually like you'll my skill would better and you know, and I'll find like my own style when right. any avenue that I go down. For sure. Right. And it's like at the end of the day, like even if I do like let's say I'm at an airport and I do like a shitty drawing of someone and I go up to someone and like I could easily stop myself and be like, no, this drawing is shitty, but I'd be missing out on like a super dope interaction, a mm-hmm. chance at connection with Bars, someone, giving them sure. like a chance to smile or laugh or yeah. like just get right. to know someone who probably is from like the other side of the world, right. you know, like you, just to connect and like, you know, share a story and like a laugh. You know, I feel like that's kind of like what that's everyone beauty, should get man. back to. And you know what's crazy too? I think yeah. some people good forget call. that you have to be bad at your hobbies before you get good at them. Yeah. Like there's no way, no one starts an yeah. expert. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I hate that too because it does kind of discourage you a little bit, especially when you're watching people that do it so, so good. Naturally. Yeah. You're yeah. like, you're just a natural at this and I'm trying my hardest, but it is really that like consistency of like, okay, well, if I want to get better, I have to keep doing it. But, right. and I feel like we also should like adding on to that, um, Yes, if someone's like naturally good at it, dope, you know, like cool, mm-hmm. it, it'll come easier for them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. but also, I feel like I'm learning that there's so much joy though, like hitting like these milestones, like in your right. head, of like oh my, when you notice that you're getting better, mm-hmm. like that, right. like rush of just like 
you know, dopamine that you just feel is like, fuck yeah, like, you know, Dude, and I feel like it. that yes. is so rewarding. And I imagine you as an artist, you know, you feel that oh, when you yeah. feel like, oh, like, probably trying to get like a beat right or like a lyric right or right. something and just like, do, right. like, what the fuck, like, I got it, you know? And for that sure. feels more like rewarding, I'm assuming, you know, yeah. I'm not, not trying to say that they yeah. don't work hard, like, no, people that sure. it comes yeah, yeah. natural to them, but like, you know, it's, I imagine it's like a different kind of like, you rush. know, just rush, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. resilience, like strength and like creativity, just like keep going, like, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. It. the it's best like, drug in the world is listening to your own song. Let me tell you, yeah. like, look at your own, I like to think, or gratitude is yeah. a good drug, but the best one is just like listening to what you worked on you put your heart into yeah. whether it's like that or if you're in construction like if you built a fucking yeah. house like yeah. god damn Dude. i fucking did that I shit did like shit. you know yeah. like you know i feel that sometimes I mean? when like, i listen back to our episodes and i'm like damn we really like <laughs> we really like have good ass conversations yeah. like because sure. at first some like people will be like oh when you said this on the podcast i'm like i don't remember i don't listen to it Same. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would i really listen to what i just talked about but lately i've been going back and like watching our episodes and i'm like dude like i can honestly like kind of like what you said earlier like mm -hmm. i kind of stepped out of my shoes and i was like loki i'm like vibing to this yeah. like i'm listening to myself obviously but i forgot everything I talked about for sure and here i am enjoying sure. it once again yeah I, I i in the beginning i used to listen to all of them i stopped doing it like i'll probably skim through them like mm -hmm. now but i agree like i always have thought like damn our conversations are pretty dope. I think I stopped doing it at the beginning because I was more critical than I was listening yeah. for right. enjoyment. Yeah, just... I was like, okay, where did I fuck up? Ooh, what am I doing that I can oh, do better? Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I, I had to worst. stop doing that because it felt like when I would come in here, it wasn't as natural for me. Like, I would try to really, I would be really aware of what I was doing. Right. And yeah, so now I'm like, okay, I'm just going to watch it like if I'm listening to any other podcast. Yeah, and a, and right, a lot right. of our viewers, they tell us that what they love the most is that it's organic. Like, it's just a For conversation. Sure. They feel like they're in the room listening. They feel like they're, like, one of the best. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely what I'm feeling right now. I'm just like, this is just a flow. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of podcasts out there that are, like, Joe Rogan. I love watching oh, Joe Rogan. Because he'd be Rogan. cutting people in half. Like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. But have you heard about this? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, very, it's like anyways, I want to talk about something else. The, <laughs> like, I don't really care about that. Oh, you were on the moon? Well, I, I just bought this one thing at the store and it was crazy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of like, I do like his. I love Joe Rogan's yeah, podcast. It's so Joe. good. They begin deep there too. Super. And you know, he's, he's, Cause he, I feel like he's definitely marketed towards more men. For sure. But I do think sometimes yeah. I listen and I'm like, this is really some, like he really is thinking right. up there. Do hard. you, do you listen to him high? No, you I, should. I can't listen to anything high because I will focus really hard on something irre irrelevant. I you. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I yeah. literally, I listen, well, not always, but like I've listened to some of his stuff high and it just, it feels like your mind is just like expanding, especially when you hear something totally. that's like mind blowing. Mind blowing, you're just like, what the fuck? Totally. And you just, you just kind of go down like that rabbit hole. The oh man's the man's made fucking miles with this alien stuff too. Dude. Like everything about the alien thing, he has like secret CIA guys or whatever coming on. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. Wild. You know what's crazy? I didn't know he was the host of Fear Factor. Really? And I was a die-hard Fear Factor fan when I was younger. <laughs> he had hair, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I, I rewatched it recently, and I was like, "Yo, like that's your Rogan. Like, what so the trippy. fuck? He looks nothing like him. Right. He looks like honestly, he looks like a little dweeb. Just a little. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, but it's cute, and I love Fear Factor. And I was when I was younger, I was like, man, when I grow up, I'm gonna be on Fear Factor. Like Good I could do it. Yeah. I could do all of that. Is it the one where they? No, I didn't watch Fear Factor. There was a Hispanic version of it really yeah like mm. i forgot the name of it but they would make people eat um like these plates with like roaches and stuff what? yeah that's kind of what fear factor yeah, was yeah that's what i'm saying it's like but it was like the hispanic version yeah. i never watched fear factor but i watched that hispanic version of it dude but if you watch it now right, they did right. some crazy ass shit i dude. just was about to say that they're doing some wild stuff yeah 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 they like nasty what do, what do you remember like i think they scorpions ate scorpions on the fucking face and shit i think one on time the they ate like a cow brain or something like that like raw i know yeah. they ate like a bunch of bull testicles they would eat Dude. like the spiciest pepper in the world and you couldn't throw up like just random shit like that, that. takes the cake and then like yeah. an intense physical like Exercise. arena or something oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah i remember one they had to swim like into the middle of the ocean and have like a helicopter pick them up or yes! some shit I was like, super oh. random <laughs> and that's why when i saw it i was like wait what that is was like the youtube of like back in the day huh? the oh, OG. Sure. yeah this, oh like, yeah shit. i was really into like I, I was really into the show too on animal planet called the most extreme 
Okay. Where it would oh, just show you the yeah. extreme of like. The most extreme of small animals, the most extreme of <laughs> venomous animals in the world. I've never seen it. And it was mm-hmm. cool because it would like show like a human hologram and then it would turn it into however the animal was and be like, oh, if a human could do this, it would look like this Ew. or whatever. What? So it was so crazy. <laughs> I loved it. It was so where I learned wild. all my weird shit about like ants and stuff because yeah. they're insane. They, they weren't. In, I feel like that played always at night. That right? one, right? yeah, right? like nighttime shit. They that played one played right when shit. I would get home from school. Oh, really? It was mostly then. That. That's when I would watch a lot of because I like to watch while eating. Gotcha. So I'd be like, "What the fuck? Like, what's on TV? Let's see." And it was right. always either Fear Factor and Animal Planet. Dude, okay. did you guys ever wake up in the middle of the night? And it's like the most bizarre shit on the TV. Randomest like, cartoons on the planet, or yeah. George Lopez, or I waking always... up to fucking Adult Swim. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. I would always wake up to Adult Swim, dude. dude. Or like George Lopez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole- <laughs> My, yeah, literally. <laughs> or like some like fucking like uh, insurance infomercial, or like, commercial, like yeah. or like a medication commercial that's been on yeah. replay for like Q- hours. Q- or like those like people that like um what sell shit. Like oh, we have these earrings <laughs> for like dude. For no, you know and what they'd I'm... be on that shit for an hour, right? <laughs> right. Like Bro. who's paying for this channel? Right. I know. Dude. I always wanted to buy the toys on there though, like the moon sand. Mm. I was like, this mm. is oh. like. Like, this is the most advanced technology I've ever seen in my life. What do you mean the sand sticks it together? together? And have you ever used it? I would steal it. There used to be <laughs> there used to be a store in Victoria Gardens called Brook Store where they would okay. sell, like, drones, like, cool okay, chairs and stuff. And I would go in there, and they had moon sand, like, on display so you could, like, try it and buy it. I would just take a little bit home every time she i would box go home, there she was adding to the pile <laughs> on God, I, was. I don't know why the hell i did that i could have just bought it but i was like oh cool i'm gonna just take some I'm of this home yeah <laughs> this must be a sample yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like the moon shoes i was one of those bitches yeah. too dude oh, i feel that one for sure you know those begging. ones that just like jump like you just yeah like, it's literally just like a jumper on your, on shoe. your shoe i don't think they ever even work i was fucking begging Dude, did you have heelys yeah i had heelys nice. too nice that little did you have heelys fucking ball got it down i'm a terrible really? remember when my, i recently barely learned how to roller skate oh you're right so I, i've always strides. been terrible on wheels terrible <laughs> dude, dude i was a strides. killer at heelys dude heelys were the shit they really I were was, I was so jealous of everyone that knew how you just gotta lift your foot a little tiny bit and i then just this couldn't let go that that's uh, always been my issue uh, like gotcha. i couldn't i'm barely now i've barely like i said recently learned how to roller skate and i bar- i feel like it just had to do with a lot of like fear. Like I yeah. had a lot of yeah. fear condition. And now as an sure. adult, I feel like I've been able to like let go of like a lot of trauma. Right. <laughs> like, you know, I've been right. healing a lot. And through that I've found that I've been able to like I could roller skate now. And I feel like I'm pretty For good sure. at it. So like I For probably sure. could give him another go. I'd probably be good at it. But at the time I just could not let go for life of me. I was mm. super stiff. Like I was just like, no, no, no. And like as soon as I felt like any type of momentum, I'd be like, fuck this shit. Like I can't. Oh, like I can't. that's oh. funny. I think when I was younger, I thought I thought I was invincible because I've never broken even now, like I've never broken a bone. Same. So I was like, Oh, I, I can never I can never get hurt. Even though I would, but I would never break anything. So I was yeah. like, Oh, it's it's okay. I, I can still do you. this. I, yeah. get you. I never broke anything, I just never dared to do anything. But Yeah, I hate that I'm Damn. like that now. Like now I'm scared. Now, I'm scared Joe to get her. Broke like too many bones. Really? Like, dude, ribs, collarbone, Ooh. my thumb. Oh my God. I've I know. How, how was toes. that? How'd you break your collarbone? So I was a little boy and I was cruising on this cri- or on this curb and Ooh. I fell on the corner of the curb. Oh my went, God. Oh, you could see that shit. It was like this. <gasps> my mom was all like, what the fuck? Like, dude. It was no. nutty. I have a friend who was a dr- who's a drummer and he was skating and he fell and he it. totally oh. cracked like he hurt his collarbone and he was super fucking bummed because they yeah. um i think his band was gonna like he they had booked like a huge gig like a bunch of gigs yeah or... and, and that like it didn't send him back thankfully but like it was wild when like i saw the x-ray of it i was like dude oh, that no. like that just the pain of knowing that my bone is just floating around and they're not in spot like place oh my God. what kind of cast did you get they had this like butterfly thing like around my. Oh, I've my, seen it. I think you, I've seen it. Yeah, you know, it mm-hmm. like pulls your shoulders back. Oh. It was like a little like, I thought it was so cool rocking it, but I was like <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah, it, like stretches your arms back. Oh shit! That. How but long did you have to wear that? I think it was like two, like a month maybe. A month? Yeah, That's not too a bad. Month or, month or two. Yeah, it wasn't crazy. Was it painful though? What bone was, was the most painful? Do you feel like the ribs? The ribs. The How many ribs. did you break? I broke two. Oh. Yeah, I, was like, I used to play rugby. 
and oh. fucking a kid stepped on my st- on my oh. chest and snapped my ribs. Oh my god! But I didn't find out until two weeks later after playing another two weeks and practicing rugby. I, I got- think that's a like men thing because and you didn't like feel like bro i should go get this checked out not at all until i collapsed i couldn't breathe what the just hell like, oh my God. i definitely think it's a man thing because one time alex alex my husband he broke his hand and mm-hmm. he didn't go to the doctor until it was all swollen up it is such a man thing like it's why don't you just go thing. to the yes. doctor check your shit out you know For, what i mean because gnarly kind yeah. of reminds me of this study that they did on little boys and little girls Mm-hmm. They put them in separate rooms. I think there were like three, four year olds. I want to say mm-hmm. I could be wrong, For but sure. they were just little children. And they put a microphone in both of them, mm-hmm. uh, like a baby monitor. Mm-hmm. And they made like uh, sounds of like a baby crying come out. Right. And the little girls, they uh, knocked on the door because they closed the door. They were like locked in the room, mm-hmm. and they notified like an adult, like oh, like there's a baby crying. As opposed to the little boys, they just turned it off and continued about their day. They didn't notify anyone. They just like, oh, let's ignore this. Like, let's not talk about what? it. Yeah. But they registered like the stress levels. Like all the little kids had like monitors and shit. Mm-hmm. And sure. the kids, um, even though they seemed like totally relaxed, they were actually like three times more stressed out than the girls. Like the girls felt stressed when they like heard their crying Whoa. Um, but and the little boys didn't so they like the researchers were like oh well they're chilling you know they just didn't care but actually when they looked at their levels of stress they were like three times more stressed they just didn't That's say anything wild. yeah and it's just like it just i wonder you know i think we had this conversation where they do you guys feel like that's you know, is that a product of just like ge- a generational thing the way that we have conditioned men to feel and think about their emotions or do you feel like it's just Trippy, yeah. solely based on like conditioning like parenting surroundings or like a mix yeah i definitely feel like uh i i, I learned this one lesson where it's like it's kind of it's interesting because where was i going there's a <laughs> I'll, I'll bring up this better example i was watching uh i was watching a movie with uh, the the homegirls samaya and uh my manager Kay, mm-hmm. and um my manager had said something about like uh, one of the young boys that was on the show, like kind of just being so softy mm-hmm. or whatever. And so I brought up a great point. She was like, well, if that was a little girl, you wouldn't say anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. But the fact is, so I feel like it's like super conditioned. Yeah. Into yeah us, I like, think so. Yeah. It, like, Cause even I notice like, like honestly, my husband's the best, like he's mm-hmm. the greatest human on the planet. And I notice my Hispanic family, is always like, oh, it's a mandilon. Like he's, sure. you know, he's whipped. Like mm-hmm. you need to do this for him if he's gonna do that for you. Like they bash him for treating me good. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And I, so I definitely gotcha. think it's like a society yeah, thing yeah, where, yeah. like, when you mm-hmm. start to see that a man's being vulnerable, it's like what, like, it's not it's, very. Mm-hmm. And it's and that's the other end of it is no one's teaching someone how to communicate with mm-hmm. now these conditioned men. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like a lot of it's like. Like like male suicide right now yeah, is yeah, yeah. fucking real because no one's talking to them and no one are, yes. are like pictures that like you yeah. could, like a lot of people that yeah. like that put themselves over the edge like that are smiling moments before mm-hmm. you know what I mean and the and a point I saw this TikTok that um, adding to that point um, it was like this video of this guy he made a TikTok um, talking about um, being just very like open about his mental health on tiktok Mm -hmm. and how down he's been feeling and every single comment were like 99 percent male just clowning on him yeah you know for being expressing himself for being vulnerable for showing any type of like emotion about just how he was feeling and like some guy like stitched it and he was like this is like a big issue you know of why men can't like show like prog like what's that progress no like show progress in that sense where it's like they've we can't evolve from you know being more vulnerable and like communicating like progress right. emotionally as a yeah, society at, at men yeah. at least because not only there are women obviously that are like right. dismissive or the, as well just conditioned you know to just mm-hmm. be like dude like you know you're being soft or whatever but right. mostly it's coming from men that as a group they don't allow themselves you know to kind of mm-hmm. let that yep. part of them like just arise you know and he right. was saying like the only time that men will ever rally together is when like a guy gets cheated on 
then will they like rally and be like fuck that bitch you didn't you, like she didn't deserve mm. you bro yeah. like yeah, only yeah, yeah. then will yeah. men be okay with like being vulnerable or like showing emotion yeah. is when it's to bash a woman but yeah. when it's just like hey i just not i'm depressed you know i, I, I you think know? it's when when like their ego yeah. gets hurt that's when they're like how could you do that yeah but when <laughs> exactly. it's something you know that like maybe that they need to work on or you know they need to find a way to express a feeling yeah. about something right. they're like oh like that's where that's their ego feels right. attacked, like yeah. they're doing something wrong, mm, or like exactly. they're or th- right. they're broken or something. Like, and you know what right. I noticed too that's that true. men react yeah. with anger. Yeah, Frequently. like when you want to kind of get through men, like they they get angry. They're like, Le- I don't want, like I don't want to talk about that. Like Super. just get the fuck out of here. Super. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. it's it's also hard. I think. For both sides, because, you know, women as women, I I mean, I'm assuming you guys want to get For understand sure. your partners and yeah. understand totally. why they're feeling that way. But when totally. they react with such anger, it kind of makes you feel like, oh, well, you're just a dickhead then. Yeah. Like you're just being an asshole. And right. I don't re- like because I do think that, you know, you can go through stuff, but it doesn't uh, dismiss you being disrespectful to others. Right. Like yeah. your feel your emotions are real, but they're not reality. They're fair, but they're right. not everyone's fault. Gotcha. So I think that's the issue with reacting right. with anger that, you know, you're trying to be there for this person right. and they're not allowing you. And I, I think that's kind of a, a, an obstacle within like trying to under, trying to give men that space where you're like, how do I get through to you for sure without feeling like I'm overstepping like or you're, you're going to get back. upset? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of guys like will point to, towards the, the girl because especially when it comes to like insecure relationships where yeah. usually that's like where it's being directed and whatnot is because they can't fit an image on what they think this they should your look person like or they should yeah because you know like like uh i don't know if you, in any of your relationships you see your significant other talking to somebody mm-hmm. it could be about fucking anything but nothing that's it's nothing more than being platonic yeah it still gives you that like burning like sensation yeah, like, on the inside love. yeah what if you say that one thing and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you know what i mean like like a lot of that feeds into why people act with anger is because they don't want to be perceived as I'm too soft for her. I don't want her to go for somebody who's like right. this. Especially like in a lot of my friend groups, it was all about that. Like, fuck, man, I developed a huge alcohol problem just because the of yeah, shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? um, like, like I, I want to add on to that point you said where they're reacting and it's like a there's a huge uh, conversation about reacting versus responding. Like we're not right. act, we're reacting. Reacting is like you know you you react when you're being triggered by like mm-hmm. trauma or like you know men sure. probably that are reacting in anger anger is a secondary emotion so it's like anger only comes up when you don't want to feel the sadness right. you don't yeah, want to feel exactly. the embarrassment you don't want to feel the rejection you don't right. want to feel like all these really vulnerable feelings so anger is the easiest emotion to feel so mm-hmm. men just kind of go with that because whether it's been like passed down like gener- through generations or just like our conditioning with mm-hmm. like family you know mm-hmm. they've been taught for the most part that they can't be vulnerable yeah, they like, can't. don't be a sin so that so right. they're just like okay well mm-hmm. i'm not gonna be then right. i'm just gonna be a hard ass because that's what i'm supposed to be yeah. so that conversation is already one thing but also um when you were saying how um how was my train of thought well, sorry, what was the last point that you made? Because I, uh, I wanted to add well, something. Like they're looking at like their significant other, like talking to somebody, and they don't want to like they would, oh, they blame them because they don't they're not meeting the what they perceive as their expectation. Of yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so sorry, the point that I mm-hmm. I saw this video that like not a video. I read the statistic that men are having less sex these days. Sure. Um, and it's like they just like researchers, you know, because women are raising their standards and just you know and oh, also just got you. they're also just kind of like um expecting more you know right. like right. it's becoming very evident that women are um they're evolving emotionally mm-hmm. and they want men to be able to keep up in that sense but men right. are still just in the same place mm-hmm. and women just want more connection want more like they want to be vulnerable they want mm-hmm. to be deeper with the person that they're with totally. and a lot of men can't meet those needs and so men like um some men that they interviewed were saying well you know like i think that's fucked up like we're not perfect you know like you know yeah. just like right. the like the surface level not wanting to like dig deeper okay like for sure how can i better myself or or what like actually even listen to what these women were saying mm-hmm. like what the problem was it was just like 
wild. It's and it's That's just wild. not. It's like it's just not reasonable, or their their expectations are too much, or things like that. You know. Yeah. Or gotcha. sometimes I feel they're even just like, well, this is how I am, and you're either gonna love yeah. me like this or right. not. So right. I I forgot this host from this show. I forgot the name of the show and his name, but he brought up a really good point about how a lot of these men don't even realize that. They don't want sex. Like, they want sex because that's the only way they feel close to someone. For sure. It's, like, the only way they feel vulnerable, the only mm-hmm. way they feel like they're connecting mm-hmm. because they don't know any other way how. So Trippy. they don't know that they can just go to a friend, even a male friend, and give them a hug. Yeah. Right. Or even go to a male friend and be like, dude, like, I love you, bro. Like, right. that that intim- that can be intimate. Like, people confuse, mm-hmm. like, intim- intimacy with just sex, but you can right. get that anywhere with a friendship, yeah. with your pet. like. Sure. With nature Makes like sense. there's so much so many ways to connect but men are just they've, they've been very limited and it's sad you know because totally. they don't allow because i feel like you said I, you know it's your feelings are valid but as a grown adult like it is really up to you if you want like to work on that yeah. you know right. like you can't just be using people around you like as a punching bag mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's like it's really you really have like opportunities for growth but it's really sad when he made that point where it's like I'm pretty sure like all of these men complaining that they're not getting enough sex. It's not it's sad because it's really not about sex. Like they just want connection. They want like just you know, women, we, you know, we practically make out with our friends. Like, you know, like, uh, no, I haven't like met women, one who has it. Like, you know? literally, <laughs> like, like does. women, you know, that they just have this closeness. You know, right. women have been allowed that. Yeah. Always. So, like, you know, I, but men don't, you know, it's like, men are the m- quickest to throw a title on shit, too. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And it's like another form of like trying to get their needs met, like immediately, like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's just, when he said that, I was kind of mind blown, you know, because I was like, damn, you don't think about yeah, it that way. Mm-hmm. You no, know, you just read that headline, you think, like, damn these men are complaining that they can't have sex but then when you bring that point it's like oh no like it's deeper than that like and you know i like to have conversation because i have friends that are hotheads so i'd like to have conversations with them and i try and i ask them i'm like because they won't be hotheads with me you know they'll be hotheads in whatever situation they're going through so when they talk to me about it i'm like i ask them i'm like what do you mean though like explain it to me because i don't understand it yeah and i don't want to think of you in this negative way like i just want to know where these feelings sure. are yeah. coming from right. so i think it's it's hard because you don't you can't do it with everyone no. that's why i try to yeah. like hug everyone because hugs are they're like scientifically proven, proven to right. you know um like Release help you serotonin your, or something yeah yeah, yeah, something like, like in your health chemical. they Oxytocin help regulate your blood flow yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so something, i i yeah. try to like when i say hi to people i try to be like oh i'm a hugger like for sure. can i hug you you know because obviously i'm not just going around groping people yeah right, right, and, right and i i do think like even with like something so simple as like when i pay i don't i try not to pay through um like the auto checkout right. i try to go to the actual cash oh, registers because like i like to talk to people like one time it was so crazy i was mm-hmm. um at target and for some reason we went into like the we didn't do the auto checkout or whatever and the guy right. he looked so sad and i was like oh like how are you or whatever and i was with my husband he was like oh can i ask you guys a question like i'm having these problems with like my girlfriend like we just broke up but Damn. she already hooked up with someone else and like um she wants to get back together now like how do i know that it's real and this is just like a complete stranger to me and i like totally like yeah. i like gave him the best advice that i could honestly it was super weird because the situation was so relatable to something that i had gone through For sure that we literally like like gave him all this advice and i had forgotten something too so i went back and like i gave him even more like on my like as a girl opinion Alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah and he was like thank you so much like i, I really needed this and i yeah. was like dude that's, that's insane a- like i'm having a conversation such a deep conversation with a complete stranger right and, like a guy who probably feels like he has no one else to talk to exactly the dude, fact that you know sick. that he would confide in that's super cool two strangers it was so yeah. weird Bro. i feel i'm here for you guys i promise oh, and man we're in a generation of like detaching and detoxating from that yeah especially like you, it's kind of like an effort now you kind of have to tell somebody yeah. like go say hello like yes. it's nice to say hello to somebody instead everyone's like deep in their no, their really. whatever social they are actually not yeah engaging. yeah yeah you know what i mean like they intimacy of the human condition is no longer there yeah. i I, you know? I recently came across this guy on tiktok too he he bought like a flip phone and he's mm-hmm. going to try it. He's going to have a flip phone for 30 days because mm-hmm. he's trying, he's doing like a dopamine cleanse. Yeah. Nice. Like I he, to do that yeah, shit. he wants nice. to disconnect. Like he wants to see how his body reacts, how his brain reacts to that disconnection of yeah. like your phone. Yeah. So, um, earlier you said that you had like a, like a shaman you did like kind of retreat mm-hmm. vibe. Oh yeah, um, that's wild. How do you feel like that's affected your life now? I'm assuming, you know, you said you were in a dark place, you know, mm-hmm. going through some mental changes. Super. Um, 
yeah, man, that guy changed. He he changed my life, honestly. I'd say for a lot of good ways. Because I was kind of – so I used to play sports before I got into music, music and mm-hmm. whatnot. But I'd suffered too many uh, concussions. Oh, and so wow. it took me out of sports completely. Like, oh, I can't wow. play anymore. And I was, like, super depressed because I felt like I had something going there. Okay. And I went over and we started to talk. And I remember as I worked for him and he called, he, he told me, he was like, if I have an opportunity for you, I'll, I'll give you, a, you'll be the first person I call. Mm-hmm. Three years later, he gives me that call. Oh, wow. wow. And so I'm like, oh, shit. And a week after, I'm on a one way to Georgia. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't just in, like, Georgia, like Atlanta or any of that. He was in the top northwest corner, 30 miles away from everything. With wow. With a creek. Mm-hmm. Uh no TVs in the house, mm-hmm. nothing. Like, everything was very green, very energetically, like, pleasant. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there, one thing, two powerful lessons I learned, especially when overcoming, like, the battles of drinking mm-hmm. and smoking yeah. and also, like, peer pressure. Because I, I didn't yeah. know who I was. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So I was just like, oh, okay, bet. I'll be yeah. whatever you want me to be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He hit me with this crazy quote and it applied to just about every single thing in my life. He was like, do everything like you do anything and anything like you do everything intentionally concise and immediately. Cause that way you will no longer regret anything. And I tell you like my anxiety started to go away is because now I started engaging in like, like a little stress. So you forget to text somebody back and that would, that I mean, in my case it would pinpoint me, to that one date and time where I didn't text him back and I'd f- fry out over it. Right. Okay. Well, the same energy that I did pursuing alcohol and and drugs and all that shit, mm-hmm. I applied that same energy into doing the little tasks like uh, like texting someone back, just immediate, concise, intentionally. Like yeah. this is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I want value from this conversation. Boom, my anxiety, gone. And yeah. another thing that I applied to that was understanding that like, our brains are like Wi-Fi routers. Mm-hmm. And imagine, like, you guys been to festivals, you know, connection. If you connect to all, everyone's connected to the same Wi-Fi. It's super busy. You're not going to get service. Right. Yeah. And now he put it in a context of where each phone's a thought. And mm-hmm. they're all plugged into your brain, which is your one router. And the only reason why your brain's overran and you're feeling stressed out, you have anxiety, is because you have too many phones plugged in. And when you unplug all of them and you only have one, it's called focus. Right. And if you do that, like you do anything intentionally, concise, and immediate, you mm-hmm. won't. And now I have less shit plugged into my Wi-Fi. Wow. Now. That was the most beyond, beyond profound thing I learned out there. When you say disconnect, you have like less things connected to your brain. What do you mean by that? Uh, like distractions? Like, or more or less like thoughts that don't serve you. Like mm. if like a thought's not serving you, like... You said something to somebody two years ago, and it's like you're about to playing in your yeah, like that thing is like that that that's that thought's not serving you. Apply the pressure to it. Like, what did you learn? Like, oh, if it's don't do it again, then don't do it again. Boom. What? Like, why dwell on over like over and over and on that one thought? Gotcha. Gotcha. How long were you out there? Uh, I was out there for about a month and a half, two months. Wow. Yep. Yep. What did you do while you were there? So I was. I was actually cooking for them. Okay. So, I, so they're, they're a bit, they do their business stuff and they're very unique. Like, uh, his, so they're, they're called those pioneers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, his wife, her name is Amaris mm-hmm. and she like has a vice article for like crystals and like, like oh, spiritual wow. work and whatnot. And, um, I was just basically while they were doing that stuff, I was just like preparing food and they ate a very organic, like raw diet. Like everything was from the fucking ground. And it's the same thing here. Like I was just playing in a garden with my manager. Like we just sat there and we were doing the same shit, which is really, really boggles my mind because they're on the same wavelengths, just in two different industries. One mm-hmm. of them was like where my mind lied. And then this one is like where my future lies. And mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, you guys are very profound and inspiring in my life. But I was just cooking for them. I would help them out with a bunch of stuff. like. I think the first day, I can show you pictures later. The first day I got there, uh, we pulled a whole tree out of a creek. Wow. And that's just the shit we were doing. That's so cool, though. Like, that's like, just living you just in the moment. Right. Because you don't have to, I guess, like, prove anything or show anyone. You're just, just doing it for your... Just, yeah, 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 exactly. I had the ability to turn my phone off and yeah. just vibe out for a second. Just like, whoa, let's take it back. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the magnetism in the world's crazy. Little animals started cruising by. <laughs> like birds would sit next to me and I would like get close and they wouldn't move. I'm like, 
strange. A snake happened to like be by my window yeah. a few times. Mm. I woke up one time with a scorpion under my back. Ooh. Oh my god, that's so scary. It was like it was like a little guy, but I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I have a bunch of videos. I was just clowning. That's I'm like, crazy. Yeah. But, but it's cool because I imagine that once you come back from that, you're able to be back on your phone without becoming so invested into it. Exactly. I'm no longer a consumer. I'm consuming with value. Exactly. I have a response or feedback and I'm not okay. Just looking me, for feed. something on like scrolling endlessly right and it, it helped my attention span cool uh, you know you disconnect from like the yeah, phone yeah, yeah. and stuff and then you go back and you look at it and it's like oh none of this is doing anything for me mm-hmm. right now yeah so i thought I it might even... might not serve me i'm gonna go apply this energy somewhere else that's super dope i love that yeah. that's a really important lesson i yeah. feel like you know i feel like we could definitely get lost in just scrolling mm-hmm. and you just sometimes Ooh. you just stop and you're like dude like what am i doing like, <laughs> i like, hate that this, feeling too like this is not like i i really am just like mindlessly consuming right yeah now. like what i feel like a lot of people really should ask themselves like what feeling are you trying to avoid right now like right. that you just feel like you just have to be stuck onto this but and, cool. and you can find it because cool. i just def- yeah because i definitely think that lately i have been kind of on that vibe where i'm like I don't really want to think about this. I'm just going to go on yeah. TikTok. And yep. then I'm like, okay, I'm tired of TikTok. Okay, whatever. I'll just go on Instagram. And yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm tired of Instagram. I jumped to, you know TV, what I mean? And like, then I, yeah, I finally sit down with my thoughts and I'm like, I'm just fucking sad. Yeah. Like, like I'm so sad and I don't want to be sad. So here I am like yeah. going back on a different app again, like just yeah. jumping back and I forth. You. I feel and you. you know, how, do you feel like you've learned anything about sadness recently? I know you've been experiencing that a lot. Or do you feel like you're still... Yeah, I, I definitely... I think sadness is lonely because... For obviously, sure. no shit. But because you're going through the same... You like... My dad recently passed. Oh, and so... Sorry to hear that. I, I noticed that like grief is so universal. But also, I'm like... This is my pain. Mm -hmm. Like, I know everyone goes through this, but this is my pain and it's so unique to me and I have no way of kind of wording it to anyone. So I I assume nobody understands, but I know they do. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like, it's hard to... Like, when I'm feeling sad, I'm like, who do I call? And how do I tell them? And how are they going to understand me? So then I'm like, whatever, I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to go on my phone. And I've been trying to not do that. I've been trying to kind of just put it down and feel the emotions. But it's hard because it's so painful. And nobody nobody wants to feel pain and sadness, you know. But I I think what I'm definitely learning is that I'm nowhere near even close to healing. I feel like that's kind of... But I also am aware that I need to feel this to get to a point where I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to come soon. And I feel like that's also something important to learn because I, I think I was around a lot of people that like are like I had told you, like they're in their healing journey right. yeah. where I feel like I'm like, okay, well, I need to heal because everybody else is healing. Right. But I, I, I also I came to the kind of acceptance where I'm like, I'm not ready to heal. Word. I like I know that I'm not in any position where I'm even near healing. So I'm trying to take every emotion and kind of analyze it and be like, okay. This is how I feel right now, and it's gonna. I know it's gonna go away, but yeah. I need to For accept sure. it. I need to accept it and feel it, so it can kind of go away. And For and sure. I feel like that's kind of like the the main step is just like accepting where you're at. You yeah, know, not feeling like the need right. to be to jump any else. steps. Yeah, right. or just just like this is where I'm at right now. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and to not feel like pressured, like you said, into healing just because people around you yeah, are. Yeah, so yeah. it's just right. like this is where I'm at. This is how I feel right now, and. It's valid to say, I don't want to change it. I just want to be in, sit sure. here in this yeah. right now. And it's not even that you don't want mm-hmm. to change it. It's that, you know, everything's in steps and I'm just not there yet. I yeah. feel like it's hard to understand that, like, that's okay. Like, yeah, be, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, always, like, that's, you're, it's okay to yeah. like, be in that spot. For like, sure. Good, you know? Because like, you don't, you don't, like, I can't heal what, you know, my siblings are feeling. For sure. So I'm trying to kind of maintain myself in a sane state of mind and I, I have to accept everything that's happening and all, like, my own reality to be able to kind of be that for them. Gotcha. To be like, okay, I know that they're feeling this way because I'm feeling that way. Yeah. But maybe right now in this moment, I'm not. So let me kind of aid them in that. And then I, it's it's so, I don't know. I feel like I'm learning so much about grief that it's, it's crazy. It's, I commend your mental strength. Thank you. But not for your other siblings too. That's fucking rad. Man. Yeah. Cause you so. know, I think that's what's hard about grief that this person leaves and you, you don't realize that you're not the only one that's broken. There's so yeah. many people feeling this with you Word. that I'm sure they also don't know how to talk to you and wow. they don't know how to. So you kind of process it on your own and you're like, okay, how do I keep saying? And I have been doing that. Like I did start writing again. Like I, I tried to write when I'm feeling it and then I read 
write it down and I'm like, okay, this is a lot saner than it sounds in my head. Like For it's sure. not as cluttered when I write it down. Nice, and sometimes nice. that's like yeah. all you really need to do, like writing it down, like expressing it, like even just saying it out loud. Like I've, I don't know, I think we talked about that one time, how sometimes you think you need to vent to someone, but right. you don't really need to vent. You just need to hear yourself say it out loud. Yeah. And then it'll thought. click. It'll yeah. click. It'll Should like be. just by listening to you. I don't know if it's ever happened to you where you're like venting to someone and right. then like mid conversation, you're like speaking and having realizations as you speak out loud. And you're like, oh shit, like it, things kind of like click for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're just right. like, you realize in that moment, like actually I never even needed to speak to you like in the first place. Like Damn. not that that's not good, you know, like yeah. of course no, having sure. community and people that are with you is super important. Right. But at the end of the day, like, I feel like going inward really is, like, the answer to, like, everything. Like, totally. you know what's best for you. Even yeah. if you feel like your judgment might be clouded sometimes because of whatever mm-hmm. emotion you're feeling. Totally. Like, do you, like you know. You, yeah. Your insides know, like, yeah, what to yeah, do yeah. for you. And truthfully, right. I like to talk to people, right. like, like just hearing your experience with, like, your healing journey. And it's, it's cool you because sure. you know that eventually you're going to get there. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, like, Absolutely. I, I, like, I see you and I hear you talk about it. And I'm like, I, I, at some point, I'm going to feel what he's feeling right now. I'm going to feel like... I'm finally at a place where I'm like, you know what? I can take a breath. Yeah. Hell yeah. Girl. So you can, you kind of like hold on to those emotions where mm-hmm. you're like, I'm not at the end game yet, but I'm going to get there. And I'm just enjoying each fucking step. Exactly. I'm taking yeah, the yeah, most yeah. out of each step. Exactly. For sure. Girl. Totally and also that. Just like, totally that. I feel like also negative emotions have kind of just been like shunned, you know? Totally. Like I, totally. I can't say I've experienced deep grief like you, so mm-hmm. I don't want to like, say like i know what that feels like because i don't like no one close to me has passed but i have experienced like other really like dark emotions you know like in my own like experiences like in my own like Mm -hmm. life past that feel shitty and in my healing like journey i've learned that you know it hurts like fuck yeah it hurts you know like everyone's experience is so different and you know it feels painful but at the same time do you ever like stop and wonder like i'm alive like have you ever been like hurting oh, so wow. much that yeah. you just feel like this deep sense of like connection like with yourself and just like you kind of get this thought where it's like i'm a, I'm alive like I'm, i really like i feel so hurt right now right. through whatever experience you're going through they're just like i like it's kind of like uh i don't i don't know how to explain like, it this is no. so fucking human yeah right like, it's so human yeah, yeah where it's like you're just like bro like for sure I'm a, like I'm, a, I'm out here like being a fucking human like what the fuck like, yeah. totally yeah. you. and and you know what it's so easy to invalidate your own feelings yeah to be like okay why are you sad look at all these people that are sad but when you really yeah. stop and you you think about your like i feel like once you, you have a breakdown and then you come back and you're like i really just felt all of that right now right. like i i i completely submerged myself in all those yeah. emotions and it's and i'm always like oh well you're not that sad because this and that but what? i read this thing no. where it was like if you're the thoughts you have on your own those are real for like sure. those are your you don't have to you're not putting up a facade for anyone like this yeah. is you it's your and experience I, exactly yeah. and once i kind of accepted that i was like okay like my my emotions are valid because yeah. they're mine and this is this is the only life i'm getting yeah right and, like, and, right. and, and and it's like, and it's, and it's like, like that point that you made, it's like, well, I must not be that sad because, you know, I'm like doing this and this. Yeah. But it's like, dude, like grief and like any negative emotion, it comes mm-hmm. in yeah, waves. Yeah, yeah. It's not For like sure. forever, you know, like it feels shitty For when sure. it's there, but you also, you're going to have highs after that. And like, that's like life. That's a like human experience. Yeah. And I didn't know that. You can't avoid it. And there's I, no I perfect know. way to be fucking yeah, sad. There, you I, know? I didn't. And I you truly, know I mean? like, truly did not know that. I 100% thought I was going to go like through, I don't know how many, 10, 5? Five that pages of grief. grief. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I was like, I'm sure. gonna be sad, and then I'm gonna be angry, and then I'm gonna be bargaining. You know, I yeah, really thought yeah. it was gonna be in and that be linear, wow. yeah. like yeah. way. I was like, oh, you know, it happened, yeah. and I'm gonna be really sad for maybe six months, and then maybe. after six, <laughs> that's months. Like, no, that's genuinely, great. that's exactly how Cut I thought it, it through. Yeah. Said, yeah, and so like it happened, and then I think you're kind of numb to it, and then you're like <laughs> months in, and you're like, oh shit, like why am I more sad now yeah. than I was two months ago? So it, it, it's, it's hard and it, and it even like men or women, like it's hard to be accepting of the emotions you're having and kind of that reality right. because when something shitty is happening to you, you're like, this cannot be happening to me. Right. Like no way this is happening to me. So coming, I think back and re- like realizing, really accepting what your life is, is what's the hardest part about it. True. It's true. I saw this TikTok. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this TikTok the other day that said, um, I, I, I like to pretend that I died and I went to heaven and I begged God to give me like one more chance at life. 
just to come back and experience like everything that comes with like the human experience, mm. you know, like the pain, wow. the happiness, yeah. the rejection, the embarrassment, Unreal. and like living like I'm having a second chance at life and yeah. not being completely like phased by anything because. God gave me, like, another chance to come back and wow. do it. And when she said that, I was like, whoa, shit. Like, I kind of, I love listening to things that give me, like, this, like, For profound, sure. like, different perspective. That mm. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I, like, I even want to tell you this quote. I don't know if you've heard it. You probably have. But it's, like, grief is, like, love unexpressed. Mm. And I think that's so beautiful. Like, when you look at grief as I'm not being able. Goosebumps. Thinking yeah, about that. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. It's like you can't, you know. And you can apply that to a lot of any. There's For different sure. types of grief. But, you know, it's kind of true. Like, when. When you're sad about anything, why are you sad about it? You know what I mean? Like, right. like let's say I drop this, like, an ice cream and I'm sad about that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sad that I can't love the ice cream. I can't enjoy yeah. it. Wild. I can't. I can't, I can't yeah. you have know? you guys ever seen um, the show Fleabag? It's on Amazon. I don't think I have. It's it's so good. It's so good. But in the show, her best friend dies. Oh, no, her mom dies. Also, her best friend dies. Sorry, spoiler, okay. spoiler alert. But before her mom, <laughs> her best friend died, her mom died. And she's, like, talking to her friend and she's, like, I just have all this love and I don't know where to put it. And she's and the best friend's like, oh, give it to me. Like, I'll 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 take all that love. Like, imagine loving someone that much that you wow. feel like you have all this like yeah. overflow of love that yeah. now you don't know where to put. It. But you find you for sure find like your, I guess, little chips of happiness that you know. Yeah. Like my niece, every single day gets me out of bed. Yeah. Like I hear oh. her voice and I'm like, okay, I need to get up. Like even when gotcha. I'm not feeling great, I'm like, I need to get up because I need to see her face and I need to like. She gives me that or like even. So I like I hate when it rains. I'm a big person. Like I love this. I need the sun. The sun, one hundred percent. I need to wake up and go sit in the sun. Like I just get you. absorb all of it. So I, I've been finding ways like that. But and mm -hmm. I've noticed like mental health has. I feel like it's like comes in waves in the mm -hmm. news, and so I've noticed totally. that lately it's been more um, totally. talked about for sure. Yeah. So I've been I've been listening. It's the craziest thing how much control we have, but we don't realize. We don't yeah. Realize we don't it. realize it. A thousand percent. It. I feel like you know, that's. Like, did you do you consider to have had a like a spiritual awakening? Huge, yeah. Okay. I would say, yeah. Totally. I feel like that was like the biggest like mind fuck for me when I went through mine. When you realize that you're a thousand percent in control of everything, right. that things are not happening to you, they're happening for you. Right. And you have like the choice, you have the power to decide. Not okay. that it's not gonna feel shitty or mm -hmm. things are not gonna go your way, but you ultimately, your outlook and your mentality and your for thoughts sure. and your habits, it's what's gonna create like for what sure. happens in your life. Yeah. You for know, sure. and that, that to me was like the biggest like mind fuck of it all, especially when. You're like in, like you know, fighting with your parents, right. or you're like fighting with a friend, or you get fired from a job, or you mm. know, you fight with someone at the store. Yeah. Like, you know, just go through all this shit, and you it's easy to be like, oh, this is happening to me. Ruin like, my yeah. Or, yeah, or like, oh, I'm a, yeah. you know, or like, totally. or going through like, where I'm gonna quit my job? Like, how am I gonna live? Like, you know, you go through all these things, and you just feel like, damn, like life's just beating me up. Yeah, but For it's sure. like, no, you're like the way you're looking at it is what's beating you up. Right. You know, because you're alive, you're here, dude. You're Bars. kicking, and yeah. you know, you're you're doing the damn thing. Yep. That's so beautiful. Your I heart feel works, like everything's working. I feel like we should end on that good ass note. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like before that. we go back down, you know. <laughs> we go. Back He's to like, the this hole. one in the I, morning already. I yeah. actually want to. <laughs> I do want to ask the viewers if you feel like you have a way of coping or if you have a way where, you know, when you're feeling down, it kind of brings you back to life. I would love to hear that in the comments because it's I think everyone has their own specific ways of kind totally. of bringing themselves back down to earth. So I, I definitely want to hear what some people are thinking, you know, if you guys felt relatable to that. But For sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think... That is a good-ass episode. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for Thank having you. me. You're so it's sick. It's been a blessing. You want to drop your all your um, socials? You can catch me on Instagram, Chief Davey. I'm not on Twitter, unfortunately. But Chief Davey Instagram, Spotify, wherever you listen to music, you can yeah. find me there. Yeah. As How well. would you describe your music real quick for the viewers? That's smooth jet. No, I'm playing. It's that <laughs> nice, nice indie spin, little 80s influence, little... 70s on top definitely nice. definitely Very agree nice. with that that's i don't i didn't want to say that when i heard it when, when i you know what i mean because oh, it's as easy good yeah i definitely <laughs> got that vibe but it's i, I love it i really thank did you. i really thank enjoyed you. it so, i appreciate you thank you so much for coming yeah, all thank the way you guys down for having here yeah. thank you besties for watching as always we are your hosts you can find us on i am besties and obviously they're watching the shit stats got milk
Blooming BC. Yes. I need to change that. I need to. I need to. We need to find your stage name, baby girl. I used to be an amazing one, and then I was like, why did I? I loved that one. Bring it back. I like that. I like that one. Thank you guys. Love you. Bye. Later. Dude, so.